We, we have George. We, we have a couple of uh, count, town councilors mm -hmm. in here. Is that? Yes, they're here for uh, one for one of your discussions. Okay. Okay. So I'm just hold. Okay, I now see Amherst Media, and I see Johanna has joined us. You're good to go, Jack. Okay. Um, bring that up. Okay, so uh, welcome to the Amherst Planning Board meeting of July 7th, 2021. My name is Jack Jemsek, and as the chair of the Amherst Planning Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at uh, 6.32 p.m., this meeting is being recorded and is available via Amherst Media live stream. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of uh, 2021, the planning board meeting, including public hearings, will be conducted via remote means using the Zoom platform. Members of the public who wish to access, uh, access the, the meeting may do so by following the link uh, shown on the slide. This link is also available on the meeting agenda posted on the town's website uh, calendar listing for this meeting or go to the Plenty Board webpage and click on the most recent agenda, which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. No in-person uh, attendance of the public will be permitted. However, every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately ac access the meeting in real time via tech technological means. Um, in the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship or despite best efforts, we will post uh, on the Town of Amherst website on audio or video recording, transcript or other comprehensive recording of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So board, member, board members, I will take a roll call I'm going to call your name and mute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please place yourselves back on mute. And Maria Chow, sure. uh, Tom Long is not with us, so he, he gave us a heads up on that. Uh, Andy McDougall, present, good, all right. Uh, Doug Marshall, present, Janet McDowan. Here. Johanna Newman. Present. And myself. So we definitely have a quorum. Uh, that's good. So uh, board members, if technical, if technical issues arise, please let Pam know. If necessary, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. Discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed. The minutes will note uh, if this has happened. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see you raised hand and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period and is reserved for comments regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Public comment may also be heard at other appropriate times during the meeting. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by, cl by clicking the raised hand uh, button when public comment is solicited. If you have uh, joined the Zoom uh, meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and, and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Uh, residents can express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected uh, from the meeting. So, and we have no uh, minutes, Pam, correct? No, not tonight. Okay. So we can uh, solicit public comment. And I see one hand raise, Janet Keller. 
Hi, Janet. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, Hello. So um, my public comment is about, um, I, I had a rough week and then I got late to your uh, notice um, and just assuming that the materials in the packet would be there and they weren't. And so I just wanted to tell you that. And I know that Chris offers the option, but um, I uh, just wanted to tell you about that. And um, I like very much like the opportunity to comment, but that made it quite a bit more difficult. Thanks. Very good. All right, so we can get into the agenda and it looks like um, 635, it's 637, so we can get into uh, SBR 2021-11, um, Greenfield Savings Bank, 6-22 uh, University Drive, request a site plan review approval under section 5.043 for drive-through facilities of the uh, of the zoning bylaw to install an ATM as an accessory use to an existing bank authorized under section 3.358 of the zoning bylaw, including minor grading and paving with the uh, existing parking area, which is map 13B parcels 30 in the BL zoning districts. Um, with that, um, so I'm just getting my uh, preambles here set up because I tried to go paperless. Um, where we go? Okay, sorry. <laughs> and okay, so board member disclosures, please. And I see none. All right. So the applicant uh, presentation. Who do we have for that? Chris. We have Tony Wanseski of SVE Associates, and I think he's in the attendees, and he would need to be moved into the uh, panelists. Okay. Thank you. He's, he's in the process. So there's also somebody named Jim. Tony? Yes, hi. Um, uh, this is Tony Wanseski with SVE Associates. Um, Jim is my client. So if you can um, bring him on, that would be great. Uh, if there's uh, questions relating to Greenfield Savings Bank and operations, he would be the one to answer those questions and I will give the presentation on the site plan um, for the board. Okay. So Jim should be coming over. This Tony. Hmm. Okay, Jim is here. Okay. We don't have his video. He has his video off, um, but he is able to speak. Okay. Hi there. Tony, you uh, ready to roll? Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Um, my name is Tony Wanseski. I am an engineer with SVE Associates. Uh, we're uh, contracted with Greenfield Savings Bank to put this application and site plan together for uh, their desire to uh, install an ATM at the northwest corner of the New Market Center. 
Uh, it's right at the intersection of University and Amity. And um, I don't know, Chris, can you bring up the site plan um, on the screen? That would be awesome if you could do that. Um, essentially, um, we, we looked at three different areas um, on the site to place this ITM and came up with the, um, the Northwest corner for a number of reasons, which is stated in our, um, in our uh, narrative, but just to go through um, uh, the positions and um, why we chose this. Uh, Tony, can you, Tony, can I stop you for one second? Sure. Okay, because I lost my packet here. Hold, hold on one sec. Okay, can you all see the packet for the agenda anyway? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. And it should be at the end of this. Um, okay. This. There we go. Thank you. Whoops. Oops. Where did we go? That should be right there. That's <laughs> where we are. Perfect. All right. I'm sorry, Tony. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, thank you for bringing it up. So this shows the position of the preferred alternative of the ATM, which is on the northwest corner. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with university. There's a there's a drainage swale between the parking area and university, which is a wetland area. We went before the conservation commission and received approval to go ahead and um, which is an order of conditions to go ahead and construct this. Now we're before the planning board to obtain site plan review. As I said, we looked at three different areas to do this. Um, the other areas you'd have to blow up into the site, but if, if you were out there a little farther to the south, there's seven isolated parking stalls on the west side adjacent to the wetland. But with the, that type of a position, we would have been very close to the wetlands. We would have had to create more asphalt there. And just maneuverability within the parking lot. Uh, when you go in, do your get your service and then pull out, you have to really use your mirrors or cream your neck to be able to see oncoming traffic within the parking lot. Parking lots, um, a lot of folks tend to go fairly fast in parking lots and, and they can you know, be um, difficult. So sight distance is a, a huge um, important factor when looking to place um, parking or anything within a commercial parking site. So we elected to go at this location so that if someone pulls in and we can actually park three cars in there, we can have one that's left the ATM, one being serviced at the ATM and one queuing outside of the travel aisle of the parking. When someone ends up leaving that, they can look straight down the aisle and don't have to look over their shoulder and they can look straight on to be able to see oncoming traffic. So. Uh, this location is, um, and those uh, alternatives that we studied was the best um, for site distance. Other reasons, it's far away from probably the most extensive use, which is the hangar and um, in the restaurant there. And um, it's also away from the front of the building where the major drive or accessibility along the front of the businesses are. So it's more isolated, but also close to the branch office of Greenfield Savings Bank. So we chose this location um, for that fact. 
The other thing that we try to do with this, this is a corner where the new market sign is. There's a, a little bit of an island that jut, juts out to protect the sign. Um, our goal was to pretty much keep our improvements with inside the perimeter curbing of the parking lot. So we would not extend impervious area out beyond where the majority of it was uh, in the existing condition. So um, with this development, we do lose parking, we lose eight spaces, um, but we do create more additional impervious area. And so what we'll be doing is taking out that entire bank of parking, putting in new berming, asphalting that, restriping, and then the areas beyond the berm that would be uh, uh, where we would do our grading to tie into natural would be loamed and seeded similar to what's there now for uh, easy mowing and so forth. The existing lighting pole on the west side of that will stay. The existing trees will stay. They can make this all work within the, uh, within the existing parking area. All of the drainage now drains from that north to south along that curb line to existing catch basin down at the uh, southerly or, or south side of this drawing. That will all remain. And you'll notice along the west side of the parking area, we have erosion control methods to protect the wetland resources. Um, we're asking for some waivers with our site plan approval because it's very small in nature and it really does not disrupt the overall um, you know, maintenance and operation of the, of, the, of the site. So our waiver request is section 11.221, a landscape plan we didn't feel it was necessary to you know, provide a, a brand new landscaping for this. We could show our, our intention was to, to um, replace and, and mimic essentially um, the landscaping that's in that area of the site today. Uh, we're asking that um, because we're not doing any lighting changes um, to the parking area that we wouldn't have to supply a lighting or a photometric plan with the submittal. Um, sign plans, um, we don't have any sign plans except which is what is on the um, uh, preliminary architectural plans for the ATM, which is standard. Um, and those are sheets beyond this, which we can bring up if, if the board would like to look at those and if they have any questions regarding those. Uh, the existing new market sign, as I mentioned before, will be removed and it will not be replaced. It's the semicircular sign that I'm sure everybody's noticed when they've driven through the intersection. Um, a site management plan, if this was a new development or major amendment, we would be supplying um, a, a management plan for this. Um, John Drow, um, well, Gleason John Drow Rentals LLC owns this property and they have their own landscape company that maintains this property. They would continue to maintain this property in a manner that they, they do presently. Um, and then because of the minor um, uh, use uh, of an ATM, we are asking for a waiver on a, a, a traffic study for this. Um, we do lose parking, but I, I think when you think about it, or at least when I think about it, that um, vehicles that are going to the bank um, now have an option that they don't have to park and go into the bank. Although a lot of people still like to do that. Um, um, you find that um, for the convenience, especially during this past year, um, people want the accessibility to be able to drive up to their banking and leaving. So that's the, the reason for installing this, um, this facility here. Not only help the Greenfield Savings Bank customers, but also other residents and, and people that use the New Market Center if they need um, you know, banking, uh, they'll, they'll have the opportunity to do that um, without parking. And um, that is my um, brief uh, presentation of what our intentions are. Um, Jim, I'm not sure if you have anything that you would like to add to that from the, um, as far as the, the bank's perspective and what the ATM would look like. Uh, Pam can scroll down and you can see some cut sheets of what the ATM, ATM elevations look like. So that's, you know, it's very standard um, um, ATM. Uh, cut sheets. Do you have anything to add, Jim, to this? Uh, no, I just wanted to say good evening and uh, thank you for uh, entertaining our request. Uh, Tony hit it on the head uh, 
what we as the bank wanted to do uh, was provide the additional options and services uh, for not only our customers, but the community, uh, given everything we've been through in the last year. But we wanted to do it in such a way that <clears throat> would have a minimal or at least to minimize any negative impacts on the site. Um, so we secured uh, Tony's services and expertise. Uh, and I think he's explained it uh, better than I ever could. All right, well, thank you, uh, Tony and Jim. Um, and do we have a site visit report? I think it's limited, but I believe it's Janet. Yeah, Chris Brestrup has her hand raised. Oh, Chris, sorry, Chris. Hello, I'm Chris Brestrup, Planning Director. Um, so I went on the site visit with Tony Wenseski and we saw the um, new market sign that's going to be removed. We saw the area where the new ATM will go and the area where the parking places will be removed. We saw a large tree in the vicinity that um, is not going to be disturbed. Um, there's going to be a curb line that will be replaced along there, but it looks like it probably won't require much excavation to do that. Um, we saw the light pole that's going to remain, and we looked at the way people come in and out of the parking lot and how they would be able to continue to do that and be able to enter the parking lot and exit the parking lot. Um, and this ATM facility won't uh, cause a disruption there. Um, I think that's all I have to say about the site visit. It was, although it was raining, and I think I, I kind of um, scheduled it at the last minute so planning board members weren't able to go, but I think it's a prominent enough site that most people are familiar with it. And um, when Jack is ready, I have a statement to make about the use and parking. And also, I wonder if um, Tony and Jim, one thing we'd like to know, yes, is the image of, of this ATM, what it's going to look like, what its graphics are. So here you're looking at that, and maybe Jim can describe that. And the other thing we'd like to know is what is Jim's last name for the record? Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, my last name is Loind. It's L-O-Y as in yellow, N as in Nancy, D as in David. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, maybe to answer your question, um, the graphics, as you can see, um, the left elevation would be uh, working left to right would be the uh, image you'd see as you're approaching the, uh, the ATM area, uh, traveling westbound <laughs> parallel to Amity Street. Uh, what's shown as the front elevation would be um, the part of the structure that would be facing Amity Street um, that has the, uh, the interactive screen, the cast dis um, dispensers and whatnot. Uh, the right elevation would be seen if you were facing eastbound up Amity Street. Uh, so from the, from the intersection looking up towards the center of town. The rear elevation uh, would be the side facing the parking lot if you were looking at the structure facing northbound. Uh, the, the graphics that you see are the bank's logo and uh, would be consistent with our uh, current bank colors. Uh, the area along the top is uh, Lexon and it is illuminated um, but it's a soft illumination, um, as you may see at um, other banking facilities, other ATM signage. So uh, I can answer any uh, questions that you might have more specific than that. I could try to. All right, thank you. Um... Jack, Chris Brestrup has her hand raised. Oh, Chris. So if you would permit me, I'd like to make a statement about the use of this um, ATM. Would that would this be a, an appropriate time, Jack? Absolutely. Okay, so um, 
I already introduced myself. I'm Chris Brester, Planning Director, um, and we didn't have an opportunity to draft a development application report for this project, but I just wanted to tell you a few things about it. The use of a drive-through facility is per permitted under Section 5.043 of the Zoning Bylaw. It's an accessory use to the principal use of the bank, which is allowed in the BL Zoning District, and this property is in the BL. The Greenfield Savings Bank operates a bank office in the building at 6-22 University Drive. A bank is a retail business and consumer service listed under Section 3.35 of the Zoning Bylaw. The specific use category is allowed under Section 3.358, Office Uses Bank, which is allowed by Site Plan Review in the Zoning District. So in other words, the ATM is an accessory use that's allowed um, under the use of the bank. The applicant is proposing to remove the new market center sign um, and also to, um, to construct the ATM and there will be a loss of eight parking spaces. And the building commissioner provided me with um, calculations on um, the parking spaces for the shopping center as a whole. Uh, based on the calculations that um, he and a member of the planning department put together, um, for the Emerson Brewing Company in 2011, there are sp sufficient parking spaces for the uses on site. The number of parking spaces required for all the uses based on the zoning bylaw, including the hangar, which was formerly the Emerson Brewing Company, is 186, uh, 186 parking spaces. And in order to share parking among uses, um, one needs to show that there are 120% of the parking spaces required. So 186 parking spaces times 120% or 1.2 is 223.2 parking spaces. So that's the total spaces required if you wanna share parking, which this um, site does. Um, existing parking spaces on the site are 229 um, when you lose the eight parking spaces to um, the ATM, that brings the total down to 221, which is less than the number required, 223.2. However, the building commissioner informed me that the hangar is being reconfigured and that the total um, seats or number of people who will be in the hangar um, is going to be 50 fewer than is currently uh, allowed. So that's gonna bring the parking um, requirement down. So the conclusion is the number of parking spaces required for the shopping center as a whole will be less than 223.2 with the hangar being reconfigured. So the loss of eight parking spaces will therefore not be a problem and will meet the current requirements of the zoning bylaw. And I believe that Mr. Mara is here um, as an attendee, if people have specific questions about the parking calculations. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, let's see, Andrew, you have your hand up. Thanks, Jack. Can folks hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Um, yeah, my question may be more for Chris, actually. When we talk about the the lighting plan, we're, we're essentially taking a sign, an existing, I think it's non-illuminated sign for the center and replacing it with an illuminated, essentially sort of billboard, right? When you consider the graphics on all four, four edges of this, like um, I, I'm just, I'm curious uh, with this being illuminated, whether that would warrant any, uh, any additional review from a lighting plan perspective. Thank you, Andy. Um, Chris, you, saw, you have your hand up still? I, I'm just putting my hand up to answer that question if you okay. want me to. So I don't think there was any more, um, on any more review required other than what the planning board is currently doing. I don't think that a photometric plan would help in this particular instance, because it's not going to show the um, illumination of the ground based on this Lexan panel. Um, and there is an existing light there. So you might ask for a photometric plan of the existing light if you thought that was um, worth looking at. I guess I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. Oh, sorry, Jack, can I, do you mind? Yeah, proceed. Sorry, I'm, my, I'm working off my phone here, so it's a little more tedious. 
is, yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily going to throw a ton of ambient light. It's just the nature of the corner is going to change with a, again, I think non-illuminated design being replaced with this illuminated box. So uh, I, I think more like just want folks on the planning board to be aware of that. Um, as I think many of you know, I, I kind of do these sort of things all the time. I think like just from my professional perspective, this is a totally reasonable proposal. Um, so um, yeah, leave it at that, thanks. Thanks, Andy. Doug, please. Thanks, Jack. Okay, so um, let's see. I guess I was interested in the location of this uh, as, a, as a, a billboard or a sign and wondered whether in fact it qualifies as a sign and is subject to some of the Amherst sign bylaws. So maybe Chris could answer that question. Um, that was my first question. My second question had to do whether, with whether there would be any security cameras in the vicinity of this. Um, I could imagine people who are pedestrians deciding to walk up to it and use it since it's a lot closer than walking to the ATM that may or may not still be in the lobby. Um, and in that sense, I guess I wondered whether there would be, was, was going to be any provision for a path from the public sidewalk to this facility. Um, third, I wondered whether the ATM in the lobby would stay. And then uh, fourth, uh, based on the comments that Chris made about um, the fluctuating parking requirements based on the hangar. Um, I guess my question was, in the event that the hangar decides later to add back those 50 spaces, 50 seats, um, will it be incumbent on the hangar to find eight more parking spaces? And then um, fourth or fifth, I forget, um, I wondered whether there were any invasive plants in the in the wetlands or in the buffers, uh, such as burning bushes that might have established themselves during the since this project this area was last reviewed, and whether this might be a good time to remove those. So maybe start with Chris. Is this a sign? I think yeah. it is. I think it is a sign. It's on a structure. So my um, my opinion would be that it should take up no more than 10% of the area of the wall on which it exists. Um, and the graphics, I guess that would be up to the building commissioner to determine whether the graphics are a sign or whether they're just graphics. And as I said, Rob is here. Um, so that would be my take on it but Rob may have a different take. Okay, um, Rob does, we pulled Rob in, I don't. Um... Mm -hmm. I don't see Rob. He's um, coming, he's coming. Okay. Bear with me. Oh, there he is, yeah. He should be coming over to the panelists. Okay. It might be easier to see if I stop the screen share. Hi, uh, Rob Laura, Building Commissioner. Uh, I, I certainly think the, the portion above the uh, kiosk is a sign. I think it is up to the planning board to decide whether or not the graphic actually qualifies as a sign. Just, um, you know, in, in similar cases, if the graphic is displaying a message of some sort, commercial type message, we typically would consider that part of the signage. Um, I'll, on, in another question that was asked about the parking, um, the, the parking is mostly regulated on the site by a special permit of Amherst Brewing Company, now taken over by Hangar uh, Restaurant. And I am in process of amending that special permit with an Article 14 uh, decision that reduces the occupant load of that establishment from 450 to 388, which is where we're going to get the reduction in required parking spaces. 
I don't have those numbers worked out yet, but there will be a reduction in parking as a result of that in a document uh, uh, under the Article 14 decision. So in the future, it would require a special permit to put those 50 or 62 seats back in the establishment if they choose to do so. Thank you, Rob. All right, then I guess, um, you know, I guess I'll just say, I think from a business point of view, I don't think the bank could have picked a more prominent location to put their kiosk with the, with the, the, the logo and the sign at the top of it. Um, so I guess that's, you know, that's of concern, I guess I'd say. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Um, so you, you're, you're, Doug, you, you're, you're thinking that it, it, um, I'm trying to get your, your last take there. Um, if you want to reiterate, I mean, it, it, are you, are you okay? Well, with I guess, I guess we're taking a, pretty low key sign that identified the, the location and, and told everybody the name of the, of the little shopping center. Um, we're no longer gonna have that. So, you know, nobody will know what that shopping center is called. And in lieu, we're getting a, you know, we're getting a, a the, the logo, uh, you know, that's presumably well known of a local business that's pretty prominently displayed at a pretty high profile, pretty highly trafficked intersection. Okay, thank you. Um, any other board members? Janet McGowan has her hand raised. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, I, I'm struggling to read this map and understand um, where things are. I wonder if you, Pam, you could put it back up. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with this, um, the shopping center. I couldn't see from my, my at home map or on the screen where the wetlands were with that um, um, were being discussed. I didn't really understand where the entryway is off of Amity Street. And then I, even from the tiny, the tiny green map, I couldn't even figure out where Greenfield Savings Bank was, which I think is adjacent, the first thing you run into, but just my memory. And I'm sorry, I wasn't able to make this, the site visit because I thought I wasn't sure that it was a go. And so I had another appointment scheduled. It might be helpful to look at the photographs. Um, if you've been to the property and you're familiar, I mean, I, we can try to blow that up, but just in front of this, there's photographs of where the, um, the sign is and where the uh, uh, ATM would be replacing. So that's looking north parallel to, um, and that's looking down mm -hmm. Amity. So um, they're going pretty quick there, but. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so Sorry, there's, Tony. yeah, no, that's fine. So this is standing um, on, more towards the easterly side. Um, and that van is right at the intersection parked on Amity getting ready to either go straight left or right on university. That's where that sign is. It's right at the northwest corner of the parking area. The wetlands are just on the other side of that. And they run parallel between the parking, the edge of parking and the improvements on university drive. So if you- okay. If you go ahead down, there's another picture um, looking, um, same position, just a little farther to the right. So you can see the tree that's gonna stay. You can see the berm, which is, you know, and the pavement is, it's been, um, you know, it's somewhat stressed um, over time. That will get repaved in that little area there where the parking bays are, and that berm will get replaced. Um, it's hard to see. The left. wetland, I'm sorry, the wetlands are behind or along that line with the trees. Is that yes, so yes, right oh. there. So those tall sh um, shrubs in that, that's the wetland area and it's been flagged. And I went back and I looked because I didn't send the wetland report in with my planning board because we were 
Um, I typically just put that for the conservation submittal, but I went back to um, look at um, the site description from our wetland scientist. And um, uh, he doesn't mention invasives. What he does say, there's a linear wetland that is a mixture of emergent marsh and shrub swamp wetland types. Dominant plant species include silky dogwood, sensitive fern and cattail. And he says that the wetland receives a great deal of storm water from the adjacent parking area. Everything drains to that area. So um, I can't state whether there is some um, invasives in there, but um, he was more or less describing what the, um, the primary wetland um, um, plants are within that um, wetland area drainage area uh, between so the parking area and the university. Okay, thank you. And so I guess my other question, the qu next one is looking at the, um, the site plan map. Yeah. Um, I can see where Amity Street is. I don't quite see the entryway off of Amity Street. I have yeah, like it's, it's farther like to the east. So we'd have to go and try to blow up into that yeah. colored photograph on the right side. Um, um, so if you go down, I'm all the way to that plan of ours. The site plan? Yes. Um, so, so, so the, so Amity's to the, to the top of the page, university is running, um, from bottom to top on the left side of the page. So that entry off of the Amity is quite a ways over to the right. Mm -hmm. It's in front of the building. That's actually a different, um, different building, different ownership. Um, so if you can go down in the right hand corner, we can see if we can blow that up enough. I can, you can probably see that, um, um, yeah. Lower okay. right hand side. <clears throat> yes, right in that area. Yeah, this was really difficult to see. And I have a paper map. So you can you can see the whole center there. Um, you can see us where we identify where our work is. Um, the property is heavy where it says Amity Street. The entrance in is way over to the right there in between. Amity and Street. So you come in in front of that building, which is a different ownership. There's multiple access easements through this property between these different ownerships. Um, I can't speak to that in detail because I didn't study that. I was focused mostly um, on the ATM area, which is to the top left. Um, there is a business sign, uh, multiple signs identifying businesses on the main entrance coming in off of university, which is the southwest corner of the site. I hope that helps. I'm sorry, I don't have any. But no, none right of that now. is changing, correct? None of, none of that is changing. Yeah. The only stuff okay. that's changing is up in that little area, which you can see that we identify a site and you've got a little polygon line of the area that we're working in. So that's okay. the focus. And then we detail it up on the upper left with the actual survey shots that we took and created a base plan of, of the actual area where the work is going to be done. Um, well, Mr. Uh, one more, could we go back and look at the green map and can you just show me where your bank is? And that has yep. an ATM that you can access after hours. Is that correct? Can you just circle around where the your bank is? It's, can, I don't know if you can do that, Pam. It's on the north, north um, corner of that, of the buildings. We'll have to slide over a little bit, I think. Yeah, so it's okay. in the northern part of that northern building. In here? Uh, up a little higher. Um, up, 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 down. That's a separate <laughs> ownership. Um, keep coming down. Come straight down. Straight down. Go a little bit left. A little bit left over to that building. Right in there. Right up in front of that. So a little okay. higher little up right in that area. That's the, that's the branch office right there. And so do, do people have access to that ATM 24 hours a day? I'll have to let Jim speak to that. Okay. Uh, there is magnetic card access to the vestibule and access to that ATM. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the, the board? I see none. Oh, uh, Maria. Oh, thanks, Jack. Um, so I was uh, listening to Doug's comments and I went to Google Maps to, um, to sort of take a look at that intersection and see what 
vegetation was there. I don't know how old this photograph is, but um, uh, you were saying the vegetation is staying and um, the current new market center sign looks like maybe it's seven feet tall. I'm just guessing. Um, and then it looks like the parking lot actually is a bit lower. The, the asphalt is lower than that sort of berm. Um, so I'm just wondering, and I looked at the drawings, it looks like the, tel the the ATM is maybe 11 feet tall. It's hard to say, it's like eight, six plus another 20 inches. So I just wonder how visible that lit signage part is above the vegetation. I mean, cause that's a good point Doug was bringing is just, you know, it's literally a new sign at that intersection. Um, I don't know how important that new market center sign really is. I, you know, I, I think if you live here, you would know what, you know, how to find it. Um, I'm not sure people who don't know where it is would look for that sign really, but it is a good point that it's just, it's a very prominent intersection and it's basically the sign right at the uh, street corner. Um, so I just wonder if the height of it could be described as far as like um, <clears throat> on Google Maps, I can see New Market Center sign very clearly. But again, it looks like the paving is um, down and I can't tell from your survey what the, um, I can see a few contours, but there's no like elevation points of the sidewalk and Amity Street versus the parking lot. So it's hard to say how visible it will be really from the public way. Um, so I guess I share a little bit of concern about, yeah, it's like basically a big new sign right there. Um, I don't know if there's anything in the documentation that uh, I missed that could tell us about, you know, how high the top of the um, the uh, kiosk would be that that sort of horizontal band. Um, yeah, yeah, we can go back to the um, to the cut sheets on that. But if you see, if you're looking at this plan right here, you can see the existing sign. There's a there's a there's a notation that's an existing sign to be removed, and it's it goes right through uh, the front part of the sign goes through that first car and goes back and you can see the note that says existing sign to be removed. That's the existing new market sign. So we're gonna be, I don't have a scale in front of me. I'd have to go walk away to get it, but we're about, I don't know, 10 to 15 feet to the east of that. I got to figure we're probably 30 feet off the right of way uh, to Amity. Um, so we're more towards the, the, the southerly side of that sign if you were to line it up. And we're quite a ways off of the, um, the sidewalk from university because you've got the wetland in between the parking and the university improvements. So I don't know if that helps from kind of a, a distancing thing. Um, there are elevations on this plan. Every one of those boxes uh, talk about what the pavement is. And, and the berm is a six inch asphalt um, slip form berm that'll be there because we want to control drainage to run it down to that catch basin. And then behind it, that whole area there is, is lawn. And, um, and so we're going to replace that lawn in that area. That big tree that you saw in the photograph, which is shown on the plan, will remain also. Um, so we're just doing some fill-ins where we're taking out pavement and also doing the tie-in um, so that the grades match pro appropriately there once we're done and finished. So I don't know if that helps. Um, we can go down if you scroll down, Pam, to the... Um, to the uh, architectural um, plans, then there's a, there's, should give you a, a height on that. So right there to the top of the canopy, we've got from the ground, eight feet, six and three eighths inches. So there'll be a curb around the, the island for that. So you go up from the curb, eight feet, six and three eight inches. And then the band strip, their lighted lexicon is a 20 inch tall strip around um, uh, the, ATM. The ATM length is 10 feet, 10 inches. And um, that's to the upper part where you're talking about the, the, the canopy signage, uh, 10 feet, 10 inches. And um, uh, well, the width isn't all that much. I don't, I don't see a dimension there for that, but hopefully that helps. Thank you. Uh, Maria, is that, is that good for you? Yeah, I just, 
does anyone know how tall the current new market center sign is? Did, uh, is it, it probably isn't data on that. I mean, just looking at the photos, it looks like it's slightly shorter than what your ATM would be. So, um, I would okay. say I don't. I didn't measure the height of that sign. It's pretty good size, but I I got a feeling that this. Um, this ATM is taller than that, just by mm -hmm. inspection, you know, being out on the site and looking at, you know, the pictures that I supplied, I think this will be, um, um, it will be taller than that, but it is, it is slightly east of where that sign is. It's going to be 10 to 15 feet east of that. It won't be right where that sign is. Cause we have to be, remember, we're trying to bring cars in get them serviced and then get a car out so that it can look in both directions of the drive aisle. So that's safe entry into the parking lot. Okay, thanks. Thank you, uh, Doug, please. Thanks, Jack. I guess I had another thought, which was I wondered whether you would have the capacity to create a uh, some sort of three-dimensional rendering of just showing the massing of this and so that we could see how visible it is from the street, and you know, I, I this this you know, it seems like on the one hand, this is just a small ATM, and you're a great local business, and on the other hand, I could imagine people really reacting strongly to seeing this all of a sudden, and you know, kind of thinking we made a big mistake. <laughs> so I guess I'm I'm interested in whether we we could get some more visualization of just what the impact of this would be. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, good comments. Um, Pam? Yes. Oh, you had your hand up, okay. Um, or, oh, sorry, is this Nero? <laughs> um, so any other board? Oh, okay, we have Johanna and Janet. This is a quick question, but I took Maria's suggestion and looked at Street View on Google Maps, and I see these big bushy, big bushes on the intersection of University and Amity, and I don't see those on your schematic, and I was wondering if they stay, because those strike me as pretty significant visual barriers. Yes, we're not, we won't be over there doing any work. This is confined right to the parking yeah. area and just outside the parking area. So no, over by the intersection and where there are large shrubs and that, we will not be yeah. there. We don't affect the wetland shrubbery at all either. I mean, we're, we're, um, we're required to stay away from the, the wetland. So um, yeah, we're, I guess if you were out there from the curb to the light pole that's there, which mm -hmm. you can see in the pictures that I provided, that extent up to the north a little bit, and then we bring it right back to where the tree is. Um, and then the other landscaping is actually where there's pavement now. Um, we're going to be removing that and actually creating an island there. So, right. um, you know, all of that stuff stays. That that won't. That light pole stays. Our um, our actual improvements will be inside of that. We actually circle through there um, and don't push out. So, um, actually, I think where that where the backside of that sign is, that's just gonna be lawn there. Um, the tall shrubs, we do not get into the tall shrubs there. So that's right at the limits of where our work is. Okay. And those shrubs are probably seven, between five and seven feet tall would be my estimate from this. So like they don't fully block, they wouldn't fully block the no. view of the ATM from the road, but they would no. they offer no. some screening. Okay, thank no. you. No, yeah, they're probably on the order of four to five. I would get, you know. I, I just being out there, I would think something like that. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, uh, Janet. Hi, um, I think we can only, I, I don't know, like Johanna, I wish I could see what you're talking about, but I think we need to, um, we all need to sort of, I, I, I feel like we're all lacking sort of information, enough information to kind of make a decision. And so one thought I had was um, just putting, you know, continuing in the sort of taking it up at a different hearing when we could do a site visit, get a development report, I found it really hard to follow like all the numbers and stuff. And then also the idea of a 3D massing so we can think about the sign and the implications of it. Um, I have a question about whether other business owners in the New Market Center buildings knew, know about this and what their reaction was. And I know that's, 
I think there's, you know, legal notice to the abutters within 300 feet, but that's the property owners, not necessarily businesses there. And so I was wondering, have, have the other business owners seen this and do they have a reaction to it? Tony? Uh, I'm gonna let Jim talk to that. I'm more okay. of a site plan guy. I don't, um, I know he's, Jim's had conversations with the owner of the site and that. Yeah, uh, my conversations have been exclusively with uh, Gleason Jandro. I haven't communicated at all with any of the uh, neighboring uh, tenants, other businesses. Okay, so um, I don't have a, so I, I feel like I can use more information and a look myself or um, and a development report. But I think what I, I think what, um, maybe what Doug Marshall is talking about and Maria um, is, is sort of like, I think by putting lit signs on that corner, it might start feeling a little strip mallish and kind of the vibe on University Drive in Amity Street is, you know, mostly the, you know, it's, it has trees, it has grass. Um, there are um, stores, but they're set back. And so maybe by putting a, a ATM right there, it just, it, it sort of looks a little bit strip mallish, or I would say sort of Long Island, as much as I love my home, home island. So I, I wonder if that's kind of the concern. It's like changing the way the new market center looks or the whole corner looks. And so I don't feel able to sort of make a decision on that based on what we have here. And I wonder what other people's thoughts were. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Chris, you have your hand up. Yeah, I had two things um, to say. I wondered if the applicant could bring us um, photographs of one of these ATMs installed somewhere and maybe take photographs at night um, to show what the effect of the light is. And I also wondered if, um, if it would be possible to tone down the white of the sign at the top, in other words, instead of having it white, brightly lit with green lettering, have it, you know, sort of a grayish color that wouldn't be maybe grayish and maybe not as transparent so that it wouldn't really be so shiny um, and, and stark on that corner and would tend to blend in a little more. So those are just two suggestions. Thank you, Chris. Um, <clears throat> Maybe I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, we don't have a, a structure that's identical to this. Uh, what we do have is in Greenfield, we have a uh, walk-up ATM that uh, is adjacent to a restaurant that wouldn't be exact, but I could provide photos of that. Uh, and what that looks, um, this would be not exact, but similar to that in terms of uh, the visual presentation and feel. Uh, as far as changing the white lighting, I would have to uh, discuss that with the manufacturer, but my belief is that will be illuminated with LED. And what I know about LED lighting is they generally have uh, options to change the intensity as well as the, um, the shade of the lighting. And I could certainly look into that uh, to see if that is in fact an option with this particular uh, setup. Thank you, Jim. Um, with regard to the board, I don't see any other hands raised, so perhaps we can go out to the you know public. Is there any public comment on this? Uh, Dorothy, Dorothy Pam, state your name and address. Two two nine Amity Street, and I am very familiar with this little shopping center. Um, the corner where the ATM is planned, yeah, usually there's nothing there. Um, now, I only go there in the daytime, but there was always a lot of empty parking spaces in that vicinity. So from the daytime anyway, I don't see it getting in the way and I don't see that there'd be a parking problem. Um, I 
have always found the placement of the sign kind of eccentric. It doesn't really, it's kind of, it's not weird, it's weirdly placed to tell you where you are. So I don't see it's moving as a problem. I do think it's good to have signs somewhere letting people know the name of the shopping plaza because sometimes things are identified that way. Um, I did see what looked like a street light behind the sign in the picture. Um, and so my thought was, I was kind of hoping that there were some street lights at that corner just to make it safer uh, for if there were a pedestrian using it at night. Um, but it's a very quiet little corner of the parking lot. And I, I, you know, I don't, I really, you guys know so much more than I do about the electric sign and how big and how tall and what it would do. But it doesn't seem to me that it would cause much problem because that's kind of like, I think it's kind of the, it's lower, the land is lower there than the surrounding land. That's it. Thank you, Pam. Dorothy. Um, uh, who else do we have? Janet Keller. So your name and address? Sure. Um, Janet Keller, uh, 120 Pulpit Hill Road. Um, uh, <clears throat> I've really appreciated the discussion about the detailing of that corner and um, the um, the uh, shrubbery adjacent to the the wetland and uh, the whole idea of fitting it in um, appreciate that very much and wonder if it's possible to add to the shrubbery rather than lawn um, to add a little bit more of uh, ecological and and um, uh, to the good looks of, of that corner. And um, finally, uh, on the tree and the burn, um, you know, trees, basically what they do is they eat sunlight and they drink mud. So um, I wondered if you could ensure that it has a good soil base around it. Um, and under the asphalt for its roots to do that job. Thanks. All right, thank you, Janet. Um, and uh, other hands, I don't see. So uh, any response uh, from the, the development team there, Tony or, or Jim? Um, uh, the first speaker, she's totally correct. There is a, a light post, a street standard, a parking light fixture right there at the corner, um, which will remain. We're going to keep that there, uh, and that provides the lighting for that corner of the parking lot. Um, as I said, this ATM is going to be shifted, or its position is going to be 10 to 15 feet farther to the east of where the existing new market sign is. So, um, you know, um, so she's correct in that and that would stay. Um, as far as the berm and the tree, um, as you saw in the photograph, all we're gonna be doing is replacing um, the berm that's there and putting in new pavement. So there won't be a lot of excavation. And um, so that tree um, will have the same soils that it's had and um, and um, will experience the essentially the same condition um, that it has uh, uh, historically. Um, adding um, additional shrubbery between the trees um, and maybe in that island, that's something I'd have to talk to Jim and, he and we'd have to get back to the owner, obviously, adding shrubbery um, to areas where they uh, mow lawn in that. It's just something that would affect them and we'd need to talk to them about that. I don't Very see it as a problem or anything. It's just more of an operational maintenance problem that we'd want to get um, approval from them before we added it to the scope of the project. Thank you. Um, Doug? Yeah, I guess I'd like to make a motion that we continue this hearing uh, to at least give us a chance to 
either have another site visit or each get out there individually so that we can look at it a little more carefully. Very good. Um, anyone want to second that? You should continue it to a date certain. Second to a date certain. Okay. We're, we're pretty filled up. I know our schedule, so. Um, yeah, I don't know our calendar, so I wouldn't know what date to put in. Yeah. May I make a suggestion? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, August 4th would probably work. Okay. Um, Chris, do you know what time? I would say seven o'clock on August 4th. Do we have anything else scheduled for that day? Yes, you have um, the Sweet Alice uh, Trail parking area plan, which is a town okay. project. It's relatively small. Okay. Um, so if that get, came at 635, and you had this at seven, that would probably work. Okay. Um, just making a note. Uh, so is that good with, um, is that good with the board um, and with the development team? August 4th? Hey. You should take a vote. Yeah, okay. So, well, number one, uh, Tony and Jim, is that okay? Can you make that date? Uh, I, I can make that date. I should be able to, I'll have a representative from my office. Okay. okay. And we can go through a, uh, Andrew, just is it whether we can make the August fourth date? Correct. It's continuing the public hearing. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with continuing. I'm not sure if I can make August fourth at this point. I'll be out of town. All right, uh, Maria. Uh, yes, I won't be around, but I'll try to send comments beforehand for the August fourth. Okay, yeah. Doug. Hi. And Tom. Oh. We don't have Tom. Um, Janet? Hi. And Johanna? No, I don't think we should postpone it. I have, I feel like I have enough information to make a decision. Yeah, excellent. I'm looking at my calendar. Um, so we're looking at August 4th, yeah, I will be around. So, um, so Chuck, are you a yes to the motion? I, well, I'm, I, yeah, I am, I am available August 4th, yes. So, and but, Chris. So that's only three people that you have who are definitely going to be able to come that night who are also in favor of continuing the public hearing. So okay. I, I could offer another date. I could offer August 18th as a possibility, if that makes a difference for people. I know it may not for Johanna, but it would possibly make a difference for others. So that's it. Maybe, sorry, I didn't, I thought the question was, how are we voting? Not, are we available on August 4th? I may be able to make it on August 4th, but my, I, yeah. I don't think we should continue. I think we should resolve it tonight. So that just to clarify my vote in case that affects things down the road. Maybe you should have two votes, Jack. <laughs> okay. So does anyone want to uh, make a motion to uh, approve this with uh, some conditions? I would be prepared to move that. Okay. If I get support, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, 
I guess the motion is to approve this proposal with the following conditions. Um, there is serious attention paid to the sight lines and work put in place to eco like try to ecologically improve the area as much as possible. So take care of the existing trees that are there, make sure that they stay healthy through construction, plant additional vegetation, um, and then, you know, really take into consideration the feedback of the board that they don't want prominent advertising on this corner for a private business and to, you know, consider scaling back the design. I, I don't know if that's clear enough, but those would be my, the constraints based that, that I'm hearing based on our discussion tonight. Okay, uh, Doug. Um, I guess that, I mean, I, I appreciate Johanna wanting to move this along, but I feel like that kind of description leaves a lot of wiggle room for how it really turns out. Okay. Yeah, I, I would, I have to say that I, I'd uh, be obliged to, to get a little more information uh, not many of us, or, or none of us, made the site visit uh, on this project. So uh, the question is: Do we continue to the fourth? Uh, what was the the alternative date, Chris? The eighteenth. Eighteen. So I, I I will I'll withdraw my vote my motion. Okay. I'm looking at the 18th. Yeah, okay. Uh, I can do the 18th. So um, going back to the uh, development team, Tony, Jim, can you do the 4th or 18th in terms of providing a bit of uh, additional information as requested? I'll be out of town on the 18th. I'm good for the fourth. Okay. Um, if I can't, I can make the fourth. If I can't make the 18th, uh, a representative from the bank will be here uh, in my place. Okay. It sounds like we can do the fourth then. Um, How about if we go back over the people who are available on the fourth? Okay. Andrew is out of town. Maria is out of town. Doug is here. We don't know about Tom. Janet is here. Um, Johanna could be here. And Jack could be here. So one, two, three, four. So you have four people who are available to be here and we don't know about Tom. So that would work. You'd have a quorum and you'd be able to vote on the site plan review application. Okay. So, I guess we can move, you know, to uh, continue the hearing till the, till the fourth, and we have a second on that. Oh, Doug. Yeah, I guess I wanted to ask one other thing, which was whether somebody from the from the property owner would have would be able to perhaps attend. Um, when I look at the Google uh, site view, I'm seeing a lot of shrubs that look like burning bushes just about to turn in the fall. And uh, if we wanted to talk about the landscaping, uh, you know, I assume that that would be the property owner rather than the, the, the bank. Tony or Jim? I can certainly reach out to um, the property owners and request their attendance. Okay. So do we have a, a second on the continuation to uh, August 4th? Second. Who Great. made the, who made the um, initial? I did. Jack did? I did. Jack yeah. moved. At, at seven o'clock. 
Seven o'clock on yeah. August fourth. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so we can do a little vote here. Um, Maria. Uh, yes. And Andrew. Hi. Doug. Hi. And Janet. Hi. Myself. I. Johanna. Hi. Okay. All right. So that's. We'll take this up again on August 4th. Great. Um, Tony, thank, thank you, Jim. You, can you let me know when the site visit is? I'll try to have some site markings out there so that it would be very helpful for the board when they go out to view. Um, just marking where maybe the uh, ATM is and maybe the curb. So that would be helpful for the board to actually see it on the site. Thank you. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you, for, thank you for your time. All right. Take care. Be on the fourth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. So, um, Mr. Marshall has his hand raised. Yes, I saw that. Doug? Yeah, I just was going to say before they left that it might be useful to have a pole that's 11 feet high. So that we could stick on the pavement and see how high the sign is. Maybe have okay. that, if somebody could pass that word to them. Chris, would you mind sure. doing that? I'll do that. All right, thank you. Ms. All right, next item um, is the zoning amendment. Um, Excuse me, Andrew, Andrew oh. had his hand up. Thing. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, as I was going from one spot back to my house, I drove right past um, the center and went in. I think, Maria, you're, you're right. It's that the existing sign is almost exactly 11 feet would be my guess. Um, there And the vegetation is very significant around there. You can't even see into the parking lot from Amity on the west, from University on the south, uh, even approaching from Amity down the hill. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty obstructed the way it's set up. We'll see it all on site visit, but it's um, it's not as bad as I suspected as I took a closer look. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. So looking at the packet here. So the next item is the uh, zoning bylaw official zoning uh, map for map for 14A, parcel 33 rezoning North Prospect Street to see if the town will vote to amend the official zoning map to extend the general business district to include a vacant parcel of land owned by the town of Amherst in the vicinity of North Pleasant Street, North Prospect Street and Cowles Lane and Amity Street currently located in the general residence district, RG. And Chris, how do you want to proceed with this? We have with us the proponent um, or the uh, one of the proponents, George Ryan, um, town councilor. And okay. um, Dorothy Pam was also a proponent initially, but I believe she's um, dropped out of the group that's proposing this amendment. So I think Mr. Ryan has a, um, has a presentation. Right, I appreciate it. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jack. Um, this is something that uh, Evan Ross and I um, have put together and uh, Evan would very much like to be here. Unfortunately, um, this was scheduled after he had made his vacation plans. And so he can't be here tonight. So you're getting the B team. Um, I'll do my best. Um, you have a memo, I believe, in the packet that uh, hopefully you have a chance to read or have access to. Um, pretty much spells out the, the rationale behind this proposal. Um, basically, we want to rezone parcel 14A33 from the RG to BG. Um, it's currently used, as you know, as a, a municipal parking lot. And the uh, larger rationale behind this is to open the opportunity 
for the development of a new parking structure on that lot potentially. This kind this rezoning that we're proposing will not mean the lot will become a parking structure, but it creates the opportunity for such use should the town decide to pursue that, that option. Um, this site has long been looked at and considered uh, for a parking garage over the years. Um, most recently, it was identified um, by the bid as one of the four capital improvements that they were proposing as part of their destination Amherst. Two of those, Kendrick Park Playground um, and the uh, improvements to North Common are already um, either near completion or about to begin. Um, and this was one of them. Um, the centralized location um, is, I think, ideal for um, visitors coming to the downtown. Um, there's long been a perception of a parking problem in Amherst from those on the outside, as well as those on the inside. And this is something that I think would address that. It has strong support amongst the business community. Um, it would be, I, I think, a very strong statement uh, in terms of economic development coming out of COVID. Um, also, it has the potential of being used by people who work downtown, um, since many of them currently have to pay for parking, um, even um, though it comes out of their salary, basically their pay. Um, so in the memo, it spells out the, the rationale. I'm not gonna go through all that. Um, we certainly can talk about it if you wish. Um, essentially what we're looking at or hoping for is a public-private partnership. Um, but for this to happen, the first step is to um, rezone this parcel. And why BG? Well, as, ex as explained in the memo, um, the uh, current zoning, of course, would not allow any such thing. It's currently zoned as RG. Um, and so BG would um, uh, be, I think, the best solution in terms of providing maximum lot coverage and making a parking garage a feasible uh, economic possibility. Um, really, that's, that's really at the moment all I have to say. I think at this point, it's really uh, something for you to... Uh, to uh, ask your questions and to uh, uh, think about the, uh, the possibility of this in terms of, of the, the larger picture of Amherst. We have uh, renovated and expanded Jones Library that's going to be uh, right there. Um, we have a world-class independent cinema. Um, we have a, a music space, a venue that's being considered for the downtown. Um, we're going to have more uh, development in the downtown over the coming years. So it seems like this sort of uh, development would be good. Um, but for this to happen, or even to possible for it to happen, um, a rezoning would be necessary. Thank you. Uh, thank you, George. So, um, Janet, you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm... I have questions, I have a million questions, but I think the most, in, the preliminary question to ask is when was this zoning amendment submitted by town council to the planning board? Um, we've had previous zoning amendments submitted to town council with a cover letter from the town council chair, Lynn Greismer, and we never received that. Um, and I, so the reason I'm asking that is because once we, once it, the um, zoning amendment is submitted from the town council to the planning board that starts a 60 day, 65 day clock um, in which we have to hold a public hearing. And under the processes that we've had traditionally and also outlined in the May 6, 2020 flow chart, um, after submittal, after the town, the town council submits to us, we start our planning board review process um, which can include ZBA and zoning subcommittee review. It is likely to be minimal if the proposal originated from the planning board. So here we are without a formal submittal from the town council. I don't know what date started the clock for, for our, a public hearing that we're required to hold within 65 days. And I don't know why we're holding a public hearing before actually talking about this, but I just, I just wanna get the timing down because I feel incredibly pressed that we're sitting here in a what is usually almost a final step um, before it goes back to town council before it, um, and I don't know when we got it from town council. And so when I look at the statute, it's I mean 40 chapter 40A, section five, 
It says said public hearing shall be held within 65 days after the proposed zoning ordinance or bylaw is submitted to the planning board by the city council. And I don't know when that day was. Okay, uh, Chris. Um, I believe the day was the date that they referred it to the planning board. Um, they referred it on May 24th and the 65 days um, after May 24th um, would be July 28th. So um, you're required to hold a public hearing within that time period, or at least start open a public hearing. So we've um, set the public hearing date for tonight. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable in voting to support this um, zoning amendment, you can certainly vote it down or you can continue your public hearing to another date. Um, but essentially you had 65 days in which to hold a public hearing. And the CRC is holding its public hearing on July 13th, which is next Tuesday. And I believe theirs is going to be held during the day. So um, you'll have another chance to talk about it with them. But that's my understanding. And I don't think there was anything wrong about the way this uh, process occurred. It was a, something that came from the town council to the planning board. And um, so there wasn't, um, it wasn't initiated by the planning department. It wasn't initiated by the planning board. So it's really, you know, got its own path. And I think I've been telling the planning board about this periodically when I've had an opportunity to um, give a staff report. Um, and so I think you've all known about it for a while. And um, it was probably fairly early in the process that Janet reached out to me and asked me to forward um, the exact wording that was given to the town council to the planning board members. And I did that. I can probably figure out what date that was. Um, so I, I consider it to be submitted to the planning board for a public hearing by the town council. And if you uh, so I'm just going to stop there. So, uh, Chris, if we continue the hearing, can we continue the hearing beyond July 28th? I don't know. I think so, but I'm not sure. I think it's a question of opening a public hearing. Okay. That's usually what it is. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think in in um, in 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 thinking. Well, I'm not going to speak for you, Janet, but I feel like you know, the hearing can, doesn't have to conclude today and then we can wait more information and, and deliberate. But Janet. Oh, I don't, so I did not know when the town council voted on this. I heard about it about a month later from people talking about it. And I sent you an email and I asked you to send a copy to me because I just had heard about it. And I think you emailed that to me and the planning board on June 22nd. So I could almost say, I mean, I still don't think the town council has submitted that to the planning board. And it sounds like a technicality, but in a situation like this, we're rushing along. Um, we're holding a public hearing after not having our normal back and forth in discussions about something. This is a really big weighty issue. Um, I know parking garages and things like that have a long history in this town. I have, I'm very agnostic on parking garages. I'm willing to hear anything, but I think there's a lot, of, a lot to go through. And if we have a ticking clock over our head of the end of the month and we have, you know, we've added planning board meetings this month. I don't know, you know, it's just, it, I don't get it. And I, so I, I don't think it's, I think a town council vote is not a submittal to the planning board. And I think that's not the way that it looks like an omission by the town council and the chair. Maybe the clock started on June 22nd after I asked, but then that's, we still have 65 days from that date. So I would, I think it'd be healthier and to stick to the process that we usually do. I think it would be better for the town if we actually talk about this at some length and then go to a public hearing with the public, you know, having heard our deliberations, having seen that, us being comfortable with it to ba basically say yay or nay. And I don't, you know, it seems like we could have a public hearing in some time in late August after taking some time to review it. We just spent an hour and 15 minutes talking about a, a kiosk. You know that we're gonna take a long time talking about this. 
I just wonder what other people do. Uh, you know, I just, I think yeah. this is- legal. Maria has her hand up, so. Um, so. I just think it's a legal issue about when, when it was submitted. All right, Maria, please. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm confused about where, I think, well, okay. So I think it was Janet who sent to the whole planning board a series of files. And one of them was useful, the meeting minutes from June 3rd, 2020. Um, it seems like they did exactly what the process, this flow chart that was May, uh, May 6th, the revised one. It seems like they did exactly what that flow chart said. Um, the, the minutes say, Ms. Haneke pointed out the two boxes at the top are new additions are intended to address proposals coming directly from the planning, uh, from the board, sorry, I mean, are intended to address proposal coming directly from the board or planning staff. All other proposals would begin the process in box three, which is exactly what happened. Town council receives proposed zoning bylaw amendment. And then from that box three down, here we are, we're at the public hearing. So I guess I don't, I mean, it's a public hearing. This is where we deliberate. Am I incorrect on that? Isn't this where we sort of think through the pros and cons? I mean, it's not like we skipped a step because those first two boxes are if the amendment was initiated by, you know, planning staff, um, what does it say? Maria, yeah. What are you looking at, Maria? The files you sent us, Janet, the May 6th revised flowchart, and then the meeting minutes you sent that were from June 3rd, 2020. Um, those two files you sent, I think they were, it was just this morning, maybe. Um, but the uh, the minutes literally call out, and in fact, it even says here, Mr. Marshall suggested an arrow from the side pointing to box three could aid in defining this is where the process begins for a community petition or a counselor proposal. So it's literally, that's where we are now. We're in the stage after town council has proposed a zoning bylaw amendment. Um, and then the next step is this, what we're doing right now, the public hearing. So I feel like I don't quite understand um, why it seems like we're not going through the process correctly and that we're not gonna be deliberating it. Isn't that what we're doing today? And then moving forward, there's like a bunch more arrows <laughs> moving down that we, are doing, and I guess um, uh, maybe I'll ask Chris uh, today. I don't know if someone can pull up the May six chart that Janet sent, but today is just the beginning of box four in the flow chart. Correct. Um, we still have like seven arrows <laughs> ahead of us. It looks like one, two, three, four, five. Um, or Pam, do you have that file that Janet sent today to everybody? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get to it. I don't think it was in our packets. I think Janet just sent it to all of us. Um, <clears throat> Is it this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that that one doesn't have the first three boxes. This oh, one. That, that, there, you that, go. That one. That, there you go. So the third blue box is where this originated. And then now we're at the fourth blue box, which is the public hearing, which we had to hold within the, what you were saying, Janet, the 65 days. So aren't we then, and then further down, there's like a whole slew of steps that, um, maybe I'm incorrect, is there a time frame on those? Is that why you're feeling like we're pinched on time? Because where it says planning board review process, isn't that where we are now? Or did we skip all that? Um, maybe Chris, if you can just, Tell us, because I know this is all new. We just yeah. adopted this, and this is our first really official one. Seems, maybe? Like, seems like we're in line, but right, Chris. Yeah. So Mandy Joe says that the dotted boxes are optional, and it's okay. the solid boxes that show us what the legal requirements are. So we're actually in this um, box on the left here that says um, planning board public hearings, and we've submitted the first notice and the second notice and we're in the public hearing but it's not a joint public hearing with the crc because they've chosen to hold their public hearing separately for this um for this particular item and i must say this is the way um things occur in northampton so there's nothing wrong with it with regard to state law um, northampton planning board doesn't really get too much involved in development of zoning amendments they receive zoning amendments from their version of crc and town 
and the city council there. And then they hold a public hearing and determine whether they're going to support and recommend approval or adoption of a zoning amendment or not. But they're most often not involved in the development of zoning amendments. So that's not a requirement of state law. Good, so um, Chris, um, what's the next step here then uh, for us? You know, we're well, deliberating. I would, I would suggest that you deliberate, that you have some discussion about whether you think this is a good idea or not. And if right. people feel comfortable voting to recommend this to town council tonight, then you would take a vote. If people don't feel comfortable and they feel like they need more information or more discussion or whatever, then you continue this public hearing to a date certain in the future. Okay, yeah, so uh, if I can, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll let, let Andrew speak um, and then, and Janet. My then, mine is just real quick. I think is isn't the issue more just around what is the date that starts a sixty five day period that we're following the boxes. It's just we're not sure when the the clock started ticking. I think Janet's right. Like we we generally have a lot of deliberation amongst ourselves before we would uh, before we go for public comment. So I mean, if, if if we feel like we've got the firm date, I think we've got a document that explains when we need to do this. I think being able to continue is also a useful mechanism to, to ensure that we don't feel like we're rushing this. Um, so my thoughts. Good, uh, Janet. So I would like to talk about this tonight and start the, the dotted box, um, the planning board review process, because it will, it will be helpful to us and it will make a better zoning amendment or a better report and our better understanding. And I think it will help the public participate more effectively. So I'd like to make a motion to cancel this public hearing to discuss the zoning amendment tonight and also to, to, to clarify legally what date town council submitted the zoning amendment to the planning board starting the date for our public hearing requirement. Uh, Doug? Uh, Jack, uh, I would think that the next step, according to what Janet just said, would be to ask for a second. And therefore, I'd like to hold my comments until that process is complete. Okay. I, I wasn't sure what, where you were. So is there a second to Janet's motion? Andrew? I'll second. Okay. And for the discussion amongst the board. Doug? I would like to ask a couple questions about the proposal or should I hold that until we've decided whether to approve this? I think it would be helpful for us to flesh this out further before we vote. All right, well, and I guess I'll ask a couple of questions probably mostly to George because you're the proponent. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know what the current revenue of the lot is and whether I, I see that in Evan's narrative, you know, he's he's envisioning a process whereby the land is provided by the town and the garage is built by a developer. Um, you know, I assume the town would lose the revenue from the lot that's that it's now getting if it just leases the land to the developer. So I was curious how much revenue that lot is producing. <clears throat> My second question is that right now to exit the CVS, to exit this parcel, you have to cross on to land that is, uh, I believe owned by the owner of actually CVS. Um, so that the curb cut that goes out onto North Prospect Street is not coming from this parcel. And I've heard second, third, or fourth hand that there was a long lawsuit between the two, between a couple of the owners of these parcels back here uh, about the easement rights 
to, to get out to North Prospect Street. So I guess I wondered if you could clarify the legal right of exit from the town owned lot to North, North Prospect and whether a new curb cut would be required. Thanks, Doug. George? I can't answer those questions tonight. Um, I think that um, our approach was that there, this is the first step of a long process. And there are a whole host of uh, issues that would eventually need to be resolved. And um, we have no idea whether they can be resolved. But trying to resolve them now, uh, I, I certainly can get the revenue addressed. That's easy. Um, I don't know what I can do about the second. Um, and I'm not sure, and I'm sure you guys will discuss it, whether that's at this stage something that, that needs to be resolved. But kind of the larger issue of whether you feel that um, this kind of rezoning makes sense, broadly speaking, and whether a parking garage would be appropriate here. And uh, it may, in fact, never come about. Um, but it can't come about under any scenario without uh, this basic zoning change. Yeah. I think the question that, that, that I'm trying to raise tonight, and I understand that you may disagree and you may wish to have specific answers to certain things, but the question I'm trying to raise tonight is whether that broad idea makes sense to you. The current zoning of the parking lot is a residential zone. Okay, I mean, so this is a proposal to change it to BG. It may very well stay a parking lot for the next 50 years. Yeah. Um, I hope it doesn't, but um, that's that's a whole other question. So I certainly can get the answer to question number one. I don't have it here in front of me. Question number two, I'm not sure how I could get an answer to that question, but maybe I can get some help from uh, folks in town hall. But um, I think it gets into sort of the weeds. Um, and that's, that's, I guess, my thought for that. Yeah, I, I think my personally, in terms of like, you know, baby steps, the zoning as this general, you know, resident district as its current use as a parking lot uh, isn't a really good fit and, and never has been consistent with its, use, with, with its use. So I think this initial motion seems to be, you know, reasonable uh, to be included within the, you know, general business district. And then, you know, certainly there's be a lot of steps afterward if there is ever going to be a you know, a parking garage, uh, but um, as proposed, I don't have a problem with, um, you know, this, this motion, but uh, Janet. So I, I, I wonder if we can um, talk about my motion or vote on it because um, I know we want to, <laughs> I know, but I just, I think the public should know whether we're having a public hearing, the, you know, the, the public hearing, if we're just having our, if we're in the dotted red box, you know, if, if, you know, we're having a public hearing, which is towards the end of the process, or we're just at the beginning of discussing this. And um, Doug, I love your question. I have like 10 or 15 more like that about the specifics of the proposal, what could be built there. You know different things like that. I'd love to get into that, but I think we should decide if we're in the dotted red box starting our process, um, or are we in a, a formal? Have we opened a public hearing? Are we? Are we? You know. So I'd like. I, I think I'd love you guys to discuss the motion whether you think we should go forward with the public hearing, cancel it, reschedule it, yep. figure out when the t the clock or the the calendar starts ticking. Yeah. So Pam, what's your understanding of, of the motion? Right now, Pam Press. Um, um, my understanding, let me just find it on the page. Um, okay. To, so, Janet, I, I think I got this right. The wording is to cancel the public hearing, mm -hmm. to begin the review process and deliberation process discussion tonight, mm -hmm. and also to determine um what was the date the exact date of submittal in order to determine when the 65 days is over okay or, yeah. uh, town, uh, i would say town council submittal submittal to the planning board but you got you got it all excellently 
Good. Uh, Chris, please. So I don't think you can just cancel the public hearing. I think you would have to close it and you would probably have to make a statement about not being ready to um, make a recommendation to town council at this time, because this is a public hearing and it has been duly advertised. So it exists. And in my mind, it's based on a referral that came from um, the town council and it seemed like a proper referral to me. Mm -hmm. Should, should I amend it to say to close this public hearing? I think so. Okay. Without making a recommendation at this time. Okay, without making a, okay. Making a recommendation at this time, okay. Andrew? Yeah, Janet, I was just wondering if you'd feel comfortable just continuing it. I mean, I think like, I, I, I definitely would love to talk about this tonight. I think I've got, you know, some, some clear ideas. I think it, it does make sense to clarify to make sure that we have the right date in place. Just, just it's well managed. Like we should we should make sure we've got that. But um, I'd love to have the conversation. And I would say like if we uh, if we don't feel like we can get to resolution, we just continue. I, I would prefer just to have a normal process, the back and forth process, a review process. Yeah, a, a continuance of the hearing uh, would achieve that, I would think. Um, but any other, or Doug? Can I call the question and we just decide this and then we move on to maybe talking about it? Okay, we haven't gotten any public comment at this point, so I'm wondering if... Uh, we should do that at this time. Chris? It, it, this whole thing is, is very odd to me. Um, I'm not, um, I don't feel equipped to respond to it. Um, but if you're gonna close the public hearing, I think you should close the public hearing and then have your discussion. My recommendation would be to have to not vote in favor of um, the motion to close the public hearing, but um, have your discussion tonight, entertain public uh, comment, and then continue the public hearing to um, a date in the future. That would be my recommendation. Okay, but we haven't had any public comment on this yet, so. No, but that's why I'm saying if you, so have the, have the decision about whether you're going to close the public hearing or not now. And then if you don't close the public hearing now, you can entertain public comment. And okay. then later on, after you've had your discussion and you've heard from the public, then you can continue the public hearing. Meanwhile, we will make a determination with town council about um, what date they feel that they sent this to the planning board. And maybe we need to get a you know, an attorney's um, opinion on that, but um, at least it will be, it will still be open and there won't be a question of, oh, we have to start this whole thing over again. So that's my recommendation. Take a vote about whether you're going to close the public hearing now. If the vote is negative and you're not gonna close the public hearing, then you hear from the public, you make your discussion and you continue the public hearing. Okay, so let, um, let uh, Janet, you have your hand up. I, I, I thought you were asking if um, that you were interested in public comment on the idea of closing the hearing. Yeah, and it sounds like Chris says. I don't think that. that's worthwhile. I think you yeah. should just decide whether you're going to close the public hearing or not. And then if you decide not to close the public hearing, that's when you hear from the public. So let's do a vote. Um, uh, roll call uh, with regard to closing uh, who's in favor of closing the public hearing to get more information? Um, and so Maria? No. And Andrew? No. Um, so, all right, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're responding to the move, the motion to close the public hearing without making a recommendation at this time. And people are saying, no, they don't want to close the public hearing 
and not make a recommendation at this time. So, so you don't want to close the public hearing, Andrew? Don't want to close the public hearing. All so right. continue on the roll call. Okay. And can Doug? Could Pam just read the motion? I can read it. Janet moved to close the public hearing without making a recommendation at this time. Um, and then to begin to discuss the zoning amendment tonight and to clarify what date legally town council submitted the zoning amendment to planning board, which starts the 65 day public hearing requirement. I don't think that's what you said. I think- it, But are you adding to it now? It's, uh, it's what I said. And I think Pam had sort of paraphrased it slightly. Okay, so can, can you repeat it so we can get it down exactly like you said yeah, it? We'll do a revote here. To begin to discuss the what? To discuss the zoning amendment tonight and to clarify what date town council legally submitted the zoning amendment to the planning board starting the 65 day public hearing requirement clock, I guess. Mixing my metaphors. But we're closing the hearing and essentially delaying it with this proposal, correct, Janet? That's correct. Okay. So now you right, start voting again. Yeah, let's do this again. Maria, are you in favor of this? I don't understand what you just said. Um, so our, I'm sorry, I have to ask a question now. So we've restated this, but it's still Janet made the motion and Andrew seconded. Is that correct? Well, yeah, the, let's in this in this rephrase sort of motion. Can we have a second to Janet's? This is the same motion that I said, yeah. said back to me. All right, Andrew's second. Okay. All right. With that said, um, let's take it to vote. Um, Maria, uh, Maria, do you have, it seems like you still have questions. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. And Andrew. It's a no. And Doug. No. And Tom is not here. Janet. Yes. Okay. And Johanna. No. And I'm a no. So the hearing stays open. And we will need to you know, discuss further. I think, can we take some public comment at this point? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see, might be Dorothy. I see Bob, uh, Pam. Uh, state your name and address. Okay, this is Dorothy. Okay, hi, Dorothy. Uh, 229 Amity Street. So I did sign on to this originally. Um, and then I realized that I'd made a mistake changing it from an RG to a BG when the appropriate thing would be to a BL. And that would be primarily to limit the stories of the putative future parking structure so that the trees on the street would cover the view. Um, and I do believe that um, it, that would also that would limit the stories to, of course, the number of stories in buildings seem to be changing a lot. So I always thought it was to three stories. And I do believe that George did say that he was in favor of it not going above that too. But that uh, the reason he thought BG was because we needed more coverage of the lot size. Um, there, as has been stated, there are a lot of questions that we don't have answers for right away. Um, but I just thought that the BL would make more sense because that's the buffer zoning between a residential zone and a business zone. And it's also the residential zone is not just an RG, it happens to be a local historic district, which means that additional care should be taken um, with how what happens around that district and within that district. Um, I also would like to say that the question of the curb cut, I think is a very key issue, all right? and that something that would need to be before any real vote or deliberation was done, what, that would have to be found out. Whether that curb cut, uh, which goes directly into the part of the lot which would stay under the ownership of CVS, 
should stay in that spot or whether for the town parking structure, which might be built in the future, whether it would be moved somewhere else and what that would, the impact, I mean, the, the impact would have to be studied on the residential houses near there. So um, I understand the, the interest uh, and the need, um, but the desire to have something that would be suitable adjacent to a residential and particularly a local historic district uh, would, would lead me to think that if you were to rezone, it should be to a BL, which is a transitional zone between residential and uh, RG. Thank you. So, so just a quick question, Dorothy, weren't, I thought you were like a sponsor of this? I, I was, and then I said, if you change the RG to BL, not RG, the, in other words, changing an RG to a, to a BG is too big a jump. If you change it to the BL, which is the appropriate one. So I withdrew my name. I wrote in um, a, a formal retraction that if it were to be from a RG to a BG, that I was not a co-sponsor. Um, if it were to be from an RG to a BL, I could stay on as co-sponsor, but they did. They they decided to stick with the going from an RG to a BG. So therefore, I am not a co-sponsor of the measure as it stands. Although I am sympathetic with some of the aspects of the approach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, Janet Keller, Hilda Greenbaum, then Sandy Muspratt within the uh, the public. So Janet. Uh, state your name and address, please. Hi, Janet. You need to unmute yourself. Oh, unmute Janet. myself. Janet Keller, unmuted. Um, 120 Pulpit Hill Road. Um, I share the concern for the, um, the change from RG to BG um, within the context of feeling that it's July 7th, it's in the middle of vacation season um, and we're having a public hearing that came before your body in a, a uh, a way that's not uh, the usual way. And um, there are all these other things before um, the different boards and before your board, um, there are stacks of zoning ordinances and this one's a biggie. And um, I don't see it fitting into a coherent plan. I share the concern about the local historic district and the access and egress. Um, uh, other sites have, I've heard suggested um, maybe uh, of value um, and for public to participate, um, I, will, I will be more diligent going after packets um, in the future, but um, I can see people who want to participate and who, like me, had, a, had a, a, some, some disruptions in our schedule leading up to the meeting being in the situation I found myself in today where I um, didn't have that in front of me. So um, for all these reasons, um, I, I hope you whatever you do, you allow plenty of room and make the information easily available to the public because we care a lot and this affects us and we've seen how recent developments have affected both our downtown and our neighborhoods. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and then Bob, Pam, which is not Dorothy, Pam, I assume. I don't, I'm not sure. We are separate people. Okay. All right. Oh, so no. Bob, say, say your name and, and address. Thank you. 
Robert Pam, 229 Amity Street. Dorothy, after silence, yours. Thank you. Um, um, I'm a trustee of the library, and it is of interest to the library that there be, uh, excuse me. Yeah, definitely give some feedback. I understand. Okay. Um, it is of interest to us that there be parking near to the library, and this is probably the most convenient place for that. Um, I am not entirely certain why it has to move now. Um, there are a whole variety of things that, that go through my mind as I, as I think about this. Um, one is right now the, the town lot is vacant much of the time because there is a fee associated with using it and people park in the CVS lot instead. Um, if a plan is pro proceeds in which there is a fee for this, um, I don't know how much revenue it will produce, particularly if it is substantially higher than uh, what we currently charge for the town lot. Uh, so there is a, a question simply about financial feasibility. We would want, as a library, that a substantial number of slots essentially be free because that is how uh, we would like our patrons to be able to get into the library. Um, I don't know whether that is going to be possible under the plan which is being discussed. Um, it is clear that we are anticipating and hoping that the library project will move forward very soon. Um, it is now at a stage where um, hopefully within a year we will be breaking ground. Um, you should know that the, the construction is all in the rear of the library. Um, it will not be accessible from Amity Street. And so the only way that you will be able to get materials in and out is going to involve, as far as I can see, um, the, the yard behind the library. And that's probably not enough. And so that's probably going to require um, some portion of the existing town lot. Uh, if that is so, then we really don't want to have construction beginning on a parking garage at the same time. There is also the question of how this is all going to affect the local businesses. Um, my understanding is that in order for people to drive into the parking lot, uh, they will have to come through the North Pleasant Street entrance and that will probably have to be widened. If that is so, how will that affect the CVS, the, the uh, restaurant, the, the uh, Vietnamese restaurant, which is next to it uh, on that lot? Will that affect that building? Uh, all of these are unclear and probably need to, to be thought through very clearly uh, and thoughtfully before um, there is a plan to go forward with this. And finally, what we're talking about is the rezoning of a lot in the middle of a block where, if I remember correctly, some seven or eight years ago, when there was a discussion about rezoning a portion of the Stronghouse lot um, to be BG, which would have allowed for a much easier construction project for the library uh, that was vociferously opposed by people in the neighborhood because they said this is the first step at rezoning that whole strip of prospect which would then uh, possibly mean that more of that side of the street would become bg and they did not want to see that happen because of the effect on the other side of prospect. If we now do this in what is essentially the middle of the block, what do you think their feelings will be now? 
And will this, in fact, be exactly what they're afraid of, which is the beginning to rezoning um, that side of prospect? So there are a whole variety of things that it seems to me really need to be thought about before you do this. Um, if it is not tied to a particular project, uh, then it is being done in order to create the beginning of BG on that side of the street. If it is tied to that, then it may be making a non-conforming use conforming, but it is also effectively a spot zoning kind of issue. And I'm not sure that you really want to be doing that. So uh, I've, I've got, as you can tell, very mixed feelings about this. I would love to see better parking access to the library, but I don't want to see it done in such a way that it creates uh, more hostility in the town between one side and another. And I certainly don't want to see it really harming the little bit of uh, consumer friendly business that still exists in, in downtown. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we let you go a little bit longer than normal, Bob, but it was all good. Thank you. Um, Sandy Musbrat, um, so your name, address, you got three minutes. Thank you uh, for allowing me to speak. I would like to record my support of Janet McGowan's motion, or now defeated. But since we've had a presentation from George Ryan, perhaps uh, one could ask him whether he's actually read the 2019 Nigel Nelson report on the parking requirements for the town. No answer? Uh, we can uh, entertain that. Um, well, George, would you like question. to respond to that? Um, the, he mentions perception of a parking problem and in the same, site, uh, uh, same uh, sentence from outsiders. Would he let us know who those outsiders are? And how did he become aware of the perception of a parking deficiency? George? That so who are they? And what is the data on which their perception is based? So again, I refer to the 2019 Nelson Nygaard report and even if you haven't read it all, page three lays it out in eight goals. Okay, well, let, let's give George a chance if he even chooses to respond uh, or not. Um, thank you, Sandy. Uh, George. At this point, I think I'd like to hear more from the public. Okay, so next would be uh, Hilda Greenbaum, please. Um, I've got a couple of issues. Um, one, the first one being, you have to count the, given that the egress and, and and entrance into that lot being very difficult. You also have to, I think, count the number of parking places on Coles Lane and North Prospect and Halleck. Halleck is a nightmare the way it is now, which is parking on one side. How many of those parking places are going to get lost and along North Prospect and in order to let people get in and out of this garage, if you consider that entrance from North Pleasant Street at a traffic light is a very bad place to have an entrance to a parking lot. So, so you have to sort of figure out how many parking places are going to be a net gain if you get done with this cockamamie scheme. The other thing I wanted to bring up is I have a little history in town meeting of over 40 years. And in 1996, a very contentious article was passed to town meeting to build a garage at the bank center. And at the time, the compromise between the people that didn't want any garage and the people who wanted a four-story garage was that that garage would be so built that more stories could be added to it at any time in the future. Now, there are various stories going around about why that's no longer possible, but I think that somebody needs to find the as-built plans for that structure and see 
whether we can put more stories on top of that one before we mess up another neighborhood. And so um, one of the stories that needs to be checked out is that it was no longer possible once the, uh, the Judy's building was put there. For what reason, I don't know. But if that's in fact the case, it was a dereliction of the duty of the board that allowed it to be there if it prevented us from adding on to the town parking lot there. And, and, uh, and then another story that I've been hearing is at the last minute, somebody in town hall, I don't know who changed the plan so that the, the structure of the garage was not reinforced to add extra stories. But I think that, that that issue has to be figured out before we start changing zoning on North Pleasant Street, a place that is a very difficult place for a park on. I guess I could also mention that a better place might be where a parking garage, I think also about 20, 25 years ago, was proposed for Amity Street in conjunction with the, the People's Bank that's there now that would go between the movie theater and the People's Bank. Danny Jones had proposed mixed juice building with stores on the bottom and residential on the top and the whole back was a parking garage. Now, whatever happened to those plans, whether he withdrew them or whatever happened, I don't know. But, but that certainly seems like a more accessible site to put a parking garage and add on to the one on at the bank center than to try to you know take narrow roads in a historic neighborhood and 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 ruin some nice neighborhoods that we really don't want we really want to preserve uh thank you thank you Hilda. um i'm sorry i didn't get your i didn't have you say your name and address at the beginning there but um Uh, Mary Sayer, say your name and address, please. Mary Sayer, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, good. Okay, Mary Sayer, uh, 159 Pine Street in North Amherst. Um, I, I'm finding this discussion very interesting, so I'm glad you are discussing um, in front of the public hearing. I think that um, Dorothy Pam's point is a really important one that um, making the big leap into to the um, business district means that much higher buildings can get put in. And also it means if a parking garage isn't put there, then it opens the door to a lot of things that we haven't thought about yet. And I think it being a historic district with the strong house and the historic family houses and the Jones Library, it's really important to make that part of the transition space rather than say, this is downtown. So um, anyway, I'm finding this very interesting. And I, I think there needs to be also, maybe before we start going into zoning, a real discussion about where the best place for a garage is before we start changing zoning on one sp specific lot for a garage that may go somewhere else. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Um, so Sandy, I think his hand has to come down. Uh, Ann? Ann, state your full name and address. Hi, Ann. Thank you, I just unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Ann Strite, 32 North Prospect Street in the Lovell House condominiums. Um, we're uh, relatively new to Amherst, having just moved here within the last year. And when we moved into um, Lovell House, we were fully aware that there was a parking lot, the CVS lot and the town lot uh, across the street, but hidden by the row of trees that are there. Um, one of the reasons we moved into this area was the historic district. Um, the number of homes that are along the North Prospect that people have had for a good number of years, invested a lot of money in, and additional investment is going into these properties, trying to um, you know, keep the neighborhood very nice and, and so on, and including 
some additional ones that will be moved from, I think, student housing to uh, single family residence, hopefully in, in the near future. Um, we have observed, as has been said, there's very little um, activity in the city lot. There's very, most activity is in the CVS lot and the flow onto North Prospect is not unreasonable. I mean, it is a difficult, you have to access from Main Street um, and then they go out onto North Prospects. Very few people, I don't think, come around Cowles and come into the lot from, from the other side. So we would be absolutely opposed to a parking garage um, um, in this space that would create um, both access and flow out problems onto a residential street. I mean, this is a residential street with people that have invested a great deal of monies. I will also say to um, follow up the uh, Janet's uh, note earlier, we just learned of this meeting and this issue and this question about two weeks ago. So I will say that this was um, news to us and we do get the local paper. So apologies if it was in there, we missed it. So um, I'm hoping that you'll have additional comments. Um, and I would also like to hear my understanding is that there was a, a study done in Amherst of parking and there appears to be no significant problem. I think the best idea I've heard all night is from our friend at the library is making that um, parking area for the, li the library and make it free to access the library. So that one is a good idea. So um, thank you and, and we hope that we can continue this conversation, but we are definitely opposed to changing the zoning um, of that lot in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Um, again, this is this is just the. Uh, um, this is not about a parking garage, but it is a, you know only about a zoning uh, change that would conceivably you know allow you know a parking change down the road, but that's way beyond many decisions have to be made. So this is just a. Um, you know, initial, you know, zoning change. So, um, uh, George, uh, do you, can you, you want to respond to some of these? Comments? I just want to just draw the attention of everyone to how this uh, got started um, before COVID. There was strong interest from a number of downtown developers and working with the bid um, open to the idea of a public-private partnership that would be, as a number of us saw, as a win-win for both the town and for the downtown. And so that's how this, this began. Uh, and then COVID hit. And so everything, as you know, stopped. Um, and at this point, with us coming out of COVID, uh, one of the questions is whether this uh, interest is still there. Um, but there will be no movement forward if the zoning stays the way it is. So one member of the public has already stated their objection to a parking garage there, period, of any kind. Um, I'm not sure about some of the others. Maybe they would say the same. But the question to the planning board is whether they, looking at this uh, in the big picture, um, agree that there should never be a parking garage there. Um, all this uh, zoning proposal is trying to do is make it possible for something to be built. Uh, the land would still be owned by the town. Um, under any scenario. Um, revenues would be lost, but the gain would be much greater, it seems to me, in terms of, of that uh, counting up parking spaces lost sort of game. Um, so that's where it originated. That's why we brought it back. Um, and uh, you know, that's what we hope um, the board will consider is that basic question, do you think this makes sense for this area? Um, and uh, given its current zoning, um, it seems like a zoning change would be appropriate. Yeah, I mean, to me, it certainly makes sense. I mean, we're not approving a uh, parking garage. There's certainly many other alternatives that the town needs to look at. You know, the you know expanding upon the, the, the Boltwood parking area, but this seems like a no-brainer to me. It's already a parking lot. It's town-owned land. Um, um, Chris, you have your hand up. I just wanted to clarify two technical things. And one of them is um, the issue of spot zoning. 
And this would not be spot zoning. This would be an extension of the BG zoning district. The BG exists along North Pleasant Street. So um, if you were to extend it back to North Prospect Street, that would be um, consistent with existing zoning. So it wouldn't be spot zoning. Um, and the other question that came up was um, changing this from RG to BL. And I agree that BL is a transition zone. And from that standpoint, that might make sense. But the building coverage that's allowed in the BL is 35%. And this lot is already very small. So to only allow 35% of it to be covered with the building would be, um, it would make it not worth it to rezone the lot. So those are just two things I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Janet, and then Andrew. So I was, um, I, I was told, and I, I think maybe people can confirm, is that the town's portion of the parking lot was acquired by a taking from Louis Lewis or Louis Food back in 18, 1989. And the town paid the, the grocery store 485,000 and now the property is assessed at 170,000. Um, when I looked at the map that was provided it seemed like the CVS was on, had a bunch of parking spaces on town land. And so that made me wonder if um, the CVS is paying the town for them or if there's an agreement between the town and CVS um, about the use of the town land for its spaces. And um, is the CVS plan to continue using it as a parking lot? Are they in on, this, on these discussions about building a parking garage? And then, um, so I just wondered if we could talk about the CVS um, portion of that, if there's a current agreement, um, if, you know, if the map that I'm looking at is correct. Um, I have a million other questions. One of them is like, what are the dimensions of this lot? And are there any build out diagrams of what could be built on BG versus BL versus COM versus BVL? Cause all of those allow garages. And so it wasn't clear to me is this lot sufficient, big enough? How many spaces, how many, you know, I, I have just dozens of questions, um, but I wonder if we could just start with the CVS lot and um, if there's, if they have an agreement right now to use the town spaces, are they really on the town land? Are they planning to build the parking garage too or do they wanna keep their lot separate? Chris, do you wanna? So I don't know if the town has an agreement with CVS to have CVS's parking spaces on town land. That's a question that I can ask. Um, I don't know what the town's arrangement with CVS is about crossing over their land to exit the parking lot. So that's another question that I can get an answer to. Um, and the other thing, are there plans to, uh, for build out? I know that um, some architects in town have come up with plans. I don't have access to those plans. Um, I was shown those plans once a long time ago, but um, I don't really have any memory of exactly what property is covered. And whether CVS is a willing partner in this, I think um, the owners of that property may be going through some transitions um, and I have not spoken with them. And so I have no, uh, no knowledge of what their thought process is on this. Thank you, Chris. Andrew? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to be clear, and the BL is 35% coverage? 35% coverage. Is it 35? 35% coverage. 85? 35% building coverage. All right, I'm looking at lot coverage. Okay, so the BG, but what, all right. Because I think George, you'd mentioned the 95% being important. Maximum building for BG is 70%. So do you have, I, I guess, George, would you agree then that, all right, what's your perspective? Is the BL, given its building and lot coverage, would the BL be able to sustain no, the parking garage? It would, it would not. If, if it okay. Was, yes. And I was going to try to explain it during the PAM, but seemed to not have any success that the reason that we uh, has, have always asked for the BG is that a BL simply is not feasible. Okay, that's that's what I thought. I, I guess also I like, I'm a, a couple thoughts. One, I, I think you make a good point, George. If if the, the, the thought is that there isn't a parking need, then no developer is gonna wanna build this, right? And it will 
sit as a parking lot probably in perpetuity. So I think that there's a little bit of a uh, market force protection there that would keep a large parking lot from being built if it's not going to be used. I will say one of the things that happened in COVID, which I was pretty excited about, um, was the fact that we had so much um, seating that was added outside. I know that that was you know designed as a temporary measure, but it got me thinking like what what a much more interesting streetscape we would have if we had uh, less on-street parking and more um, like on-street seating, right? And that that would actually be a pretty pretty cool opportunity for us to make the downtown be something that's maybe more inviting and exciting. If we could concentrate the parking, I imagine there's probably a lot of store owners who would rather have, you know, five tables out front than than a car in a in a single um, in a single lot or single spot. Um, I I thought Hilda's comment I didn't even consider that I thought that was a pretty interesting one relative to the Bangs Garage. Like, can we build up on that or not? Um, I I've I've never I, I've went to that lot once. And it was like a horrific experience trying to just n navigate the turns and I'll never go back in there again. Um, <laughs> it's like, a, to me, a, a complete wasted opportunity. I wonder if there's a, a way to improve that. I, I don't know that there would be, but whether we might actually improve utilization there. But um, overall, like, I, I think this makes sense. I think that I, I like the idea of being able to concentrate the parking in a, in a single area. I'm excited about the opportunity of, of maybe opening up on... Um, more creative uses of our sidewalks and, and streetscapes. Um, I think that there is that control mechanism. I, no one will build it if we're not going to be able to put cars in it. Um, it's it's not, you know, I think the garages would be the highest and best use of that space. I, I do agree that um, it would be a problem if, if we convert this to BG and then, you know, it gets um, it gets developed into something other than the parking lot. But the town owns the lot, right? So, like, we would have, we would have say over that. It's not like a, a private developer could come in and build something there. They'd have to purchase the lot from us. So, another control mechanism mechanism in place. So, overall, I, I I'm excited about the opportunity. I, I think that it's something that I would recommend that we look forward with. Again, maybe maybe there is some really positive upside that we can uh, we can leverage to make the streetscape be more more vibrant and exciting. Thanks. Good points, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, George, you have your hand up, and then uh, Maria. There's real interest, and I believe there still is very real interest uh, in the private sector in building a public garage on that lot. There is no interest, has never been expressed by anyone that I'm aware of, of doing anything with the Boltwood lot. Um, and there's also the issue, and part of the reason probably has to do with the, the fact that of where you put a ramp assuming you could even put a second story um, on that. And that's a question that no one has been able to answer to my satisfaction. I've heard answers both yes and no, but even if you could, it's, it's very difficult to imagine how you could construct any kind of ramp. Um, also given the fact that you already have existing parking there and you have delivery trucks that are 10 or 12 feet high. Um, so I guess my point is simply that um, there has been zero interest from any sector on doing anything with the Boltwood um, but there is very real interest in um, the CVS lot. Um, also, this would only be done with a private, by a private entity. The, the town would not be spending any money on this at all. Uh, Maria, please. Uh, thanks, Jack. Um, I w wish I had more time this past week. I would have dug through uh, years and years of notes from, uh, I feel like this Groundhog Day, I know we've discussed this exact thing at previous zoning subcommittee meetings. I feel like there was an article about this. I found an article where we did approve that parking garages were allowed more in like for a site, instead of special permit, we relax it to site plan review and BGBBC com and maybe BL, I can't remember. But this is something that I know has been of interest for a long time. And we've discussed it uh, for so many hours. And I just wanted to like dig through all these minutes and just see what the pros and cons were because I just didn't have time to research that and <clears throat> really get into that to get more information 
to really give my two cents, but I think Andrew's points were great. I mean, it, it's basically, yeah, your downtown property is so valuable. The land is so scarce. Um, it makes perfect sense to concentrate the cars in one area so that downtown can be for people, for people walking, biking, enjoying the outdoors and get the cars the heck out of the way. Um, and so this is a good first step. Obviously there are tons of things to work out as far as the weeds, you know, um, the, the parcels, the access, the adjacencies to other residences and um, other <clears throat> historical districts. But without this first step, that can't even be studied or it's not worth studying because it's not even possible. So uh, yeah, th that, that's been said so many times at so many different <laughs> meetings, I feel like. And I just, I haven't had time to dig through memos and minutes, um, but I do feel like we've had really healthy discussions about this because there was interest. And um, so this is a, yet another try at it. And um, I feel like the only way to really move forward uh, is to approve this first step. And then let's do the studies. Um, people will be able to find funding to get consultants, to get a designer, an architect, get civil, you know, people who can give us real numbers and answers. Uh, but without this, um, yeah, it, it's been, I don't know, maybe decades. I, Chris would know better, but I feel like I've certainly talked about it in meetings um, many, many times. And I just wish I had dug up, um, you know, a lot of the pros and cons so that I could be more informed with um, opinions other than just a feeling that it makes a lot of sense. Um, to concentrate the cars, as Andrew has just said, so I won't reiterate his same points, but um, but that's my uh, first feeling about this um, proposal. Thanks, Maria. I, uh, normally, we take a break at eight and it's nine, so I, I would offer that we do a little five-minute break right now because we do have a couple more items uh, on the agenda, including uh, concluding this hearing. Um, so can we reconvene, you know, 907-ish? And everybody put their video and audio on mute.
Oof. Yeah, Pam, let me know when. We have everybody back. Yeah, this is a good view. Okay. Thanks for hanging in there, George. Uh, another long night. Uh, I, I'm trained by town council, so we're, we're only halfway <laughs> through a typical council meeting. So, uh, but you guys work hard too. I can see that, and you've been working uh, regularly, week after week. And I, I really respect yeah. that and admire that. But uh, yeah, this is this is only halfway through my usual Monday night. So. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So I, I don't see Andrew yet or um, Janet. There's Andrew. So I don't see Johanna or, or Janet yet. Okay. Well, My computer is just saying 9.07. My phone is saying 9.09. .09. There's Johanna. Uh, Janet uh, actually had the next question, so I'm sure uh, she'll be popping in. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jack, Janet yes. has returned. Okay, so you want to get us back online? Yep. Or? We're good to go. Okay, so our, we returned from a break. Um, it's 9.10, and Janet? Um, so I, I've, I, there, there has been a, a study of the three parking locations, the Bank Center, um, the Amity Street lot, and the CVS lot. And I think that would be good to circulate amongst the planning board. Um, and then also, um, you know, I'd love to see Maria Chow's notes. And also, I know that there's been at least three parking studies at downtown, none of them recommending a parking garage and saying parking is sufficient, but kind of hidden and unknown. And I wondered if we could find out, like, I don't know if I want to read like 150 pages of those reports, but really what they said about parking garages and maybe locations or upsides and downsides. So we don't have to kind of redo the wheel. Um, so that, that's some information I'd be interested in having us look at. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, like, if you built a parking garage on the CVS lot, like how many spaces are there now? How many can you get? inside three stories, um, is, would it be underground? Like is, you know, what's the gain, you know, what's the cost? Um, and then, you know, versus other lots. And so, you know, I think that um, that would be really valuable, some, some detail. Um, it looks like a very tight space for a parking lot. And I, you know, I look at the Amity Street lot and I think People's Bank has space, Bank of America has space. You know, there's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of space, you know, like Bank of America isn't really using it during the day at night, it's used more, um, you know, at the same time, you would want to buffer the South Prospect people from tall buildings. And so I think we need to keep that three story idea and also buffering the neighborhoods. I also think that, you know, on the BG, you still have setback requirements on the side. It's adjoining a residential district, so you have 20 feet. And so I wonder, like, you know, has anyone done any rough drawings of what actually is possible there and how many spaces, you know, you're going to lose spaces probably from what you have now, at least on one floor. And so I, I feel like I need a lot more detail about the proposal. I mean, developers are talking about it. Who are they? What are they, what are they seeing like that they could build, you know, and it, you know, it'd be great to see a 3D picture of a good, really attractive, you know, not, not like 
a final drawing, but you know, how many spaces can you get? Are we talking about an extra 80 spaces? Could we get more on Amity Street? And for God's sake, someone please tell me if we can build another floor or two on the Bangs lot. You know, I mean, I, I don't feel like this is, we can keep talking about this as if we, you know, live in some cave somewhere and can't get the answers, yeah. you know. So, so Jen, I, I, I think what we're just looking at is, the, you know, the first step, we're not really, uh, you know, talking about a parking garage, although that is a potential intent. Uh, but, but this is town on land, it's a parking lot already, and it's kind of consistent with the, you know, adjacent, uh, use and I think you know we would be prudent with regard to the eventual development of any sort of structure at this property but we're just we're, I think we're just looking at the zoning and we're not we're there's no there's not going to be details available for well, us because I think you could ask for that's just not that's that's way ahead of, but I agree you have great ideas with regard to um you know the people's bank area the 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 you know boltwood you know area but i just think this is this is it's a little bit of a of a fix that really has really no major percussions at this point in time um my opinion but so, um could we get the study of the three different parking lots that has already been done i mean, I don't i mean you're sort of saying i don't need information and you know i feel like i do need information i mean you know, how well, do you we're not you talking about a parking garage. We're just talking about what a change to, you know, town-owned land that is adjacent, you know, adjacent to the, the the BG that should be BG anyway. By you know, and its current use, it's more. Uh, Chris, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say that there was a study done before the Boltwood Garage was built, so that's back in the late '80s or early '90s. Um, we can probably resurrect that study, but I'm not sure that it's going to be completely relevant to this situation, but I'd be happy to um, do that research. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. So I still would like that information on what can be built there and how many spaces. Okay. I think that's just, that that's many steps forward. Uh, and uh, Doug? Yes, uh, seeing that it's 9.15 and we have other things on our agenda and it seems like we're pretty, I think the sense I'm getting from the conversation tonight has been that we will be continuing this hearing. Um, I'd like to move that we continue this hearing to a date certain, uh, not before uh, August 4th. Yeah, I, I forget the dates that we were talking about. Um, Chris, where do you see, if we continue the hearing, what would be potential dates for that? Um, I guess I would recommend August 4th because what do you have then? You have the Greenfield Savings Bank and you have the Sweet Alice parking area. So that would, that would probably be a good date and then um, continue it to 7.30 on August 4th. Okay, is there a second to uh, Doug's, uh, Andrew? Okay, um, for the discussion amongst the board, I see none, all right. Um, we can take a roll call here. Uh, Maria? Yes. Andrew? Aye. Doug? Aye. Tom, or Tom's not here. <laughs> uh, Janet? Yes. And Johanna? Aye. And myself, aye. Okay, so that's six zero for continuance. And we're looking at August 4th. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, George. Thank you to the board and to, uh, to Chris and to Rob. I uh, appreciate all you've done. And I'll see everyone on August 4th. And hopefully thank everyone you, will join me. Thank you. Thank you. And next on the item, we have um, SPR 
2005-00001 Amherst Shopping Center, uh, Point Science Inc. to present new signs for CVS Pharmacy at 165 University Drive in accordance with condition number two of SPR 2005-00001. And who do we have uh, going to present this, Chris? Or no, I'm not sure. Um, I can present it. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anyone in the audience who's um, here to present it. I don't see anybody raising their hand. I, right I would not fault them by the by the length of the uh, prior proceedings. So. Um, so essentially, it is the CVS building that's at University Drive, which is in the Big Wide Plaza. And when that um, when that development was expanded a number of years ago, um, there was a site plan review um, approval that stated that any new signs must be submitted to the planning board for approval at a business meeting. So that's what this is all about. So. Um, looking at the new signs if Pam would bring up the um, images that would be helpful mm -hmm. yes. there's an image of the CVS building and it shows it in conjunction with um, the parking lot there and then we can walk through the signs that are being proposed Maybe we could put a parking garage here. <laughs> Delayed reaction there. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so here is the property. And you can see that the CVS building is part of the bigger um, big Y property. It's actually a property unto itself, but it's part of this greater shopping center. Um, and it's essentially surrounded by University Drive and parking lot. And so Pam, if you could continue to scroll through. Um, and this shows you the condition, condition two, I believe it is, any new signs submitted to the planning board for approval at a business meeting. And that is really true of this whole shopping center, as you well know, because we studied the big Y signs a, a while ago. So um, what they're proposing to do, they have their signs shown on this um, plan here. So there's signs one through eight, and we can go through those signs, or actually one through six. Let's go through them one by one. So um, the image on the left here is the existing signs. Um, the existing, uh, I'm not sure what it even says. I think it says something about pharmacy. And then there's blue writing and CVS. So they're giving you the, um, the sizes of these um, existing signs. And the, the proposed signs are um, pretty much equal in size, if not smaller. And there's a health hub sign and the middle sign is gonna be blank. And the one on the right says, um, I think it says something about clinic. Maybe we could go down below and look at the individual signs. Do they show the individual signs? There it is, minute clinic. Mm -hmm. So that's what the signs are gonna look like on this um, side of the building that's facing, I guess that's east, is that right? Or south, maybe that's south. Um, so does anyone have questions about this? Do you want to look at the sizes of these things in relation to the sizes of the existing? Um, uh, well, Andrew has his hand up. I, I, I'm just ready to make a motion to approve this. I mean, I think if you like put the two pictures next to each other and didn't say which one was which, I'd be I'd be impressed if we knew which was the current and which was the future. I think it's like a, mm -hmm. a non-issue and I'd like us to just... I, I would I would propose that we approve this. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. and then there's also sure. this um, the um, monument sign, 
where they're proposing to take out the CVS and put in the heart with the CVS pharmacy. So that's um, right here. Yep. So Doug, you're going to second? Yes, I am, Jack. <laughs> So All right, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, 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 I, I see none. So we can do a, a roll call here to approve this. Um, Maria? Andrew? Aye. Doug? Aye. Janet? This is a personal record for the planning board, and I approve. All right, and Johanna? Aye. And I am so, uh, myself? Aye. So we're good to go on that. So we can move on to new business. And Chris, we have a chapter 61A release request property of Thomas F. Mitchell Family Trust and Mitchell Family Trust uh, land on Sunderland Road, portion of Assessor's Map, parcel ID 2C-12, which is 18.5 acres. We have Tom Reedy here um, representing the owner. And so you may wanna hear from him. He can explain this um, better than I can. Attorney Tom Reedy. I'm, I'm moving Attorney Reedy over into the panelists. He makes his way. He How's did. that? Hello, Mr. Reedy. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good to hear you. Hi, everybody. I'd, I'd show you. I'm, I just pulled off the highway. I'm in the car, so you can't really see me. I was coming back from a hearing in Douglas, but nobody wants to hear about that because you've had a long <laughs> night. So let me get to business. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the Mitchell family has a contract to sell their about 18.58 acres, which is a portion of the land that they own between Montague Road and Sunderland Road. And that 18.58 is currently under chapter 61A as is the balance of their land. But they want it, um, as you know, under 61A section 14, they have got to provide a notice of intent to convert uh, the land to other use, and the town has a, a right of first refusal. I believe the purchase price is 1.6 million, but uh, Chris Brestrup could probably correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we would request that uh, the, the board suggest to town council, and I'll be there Monday evening, that town council does not exercise that uh, option to purchase. The town could probably find better use for $1.6 million, and, and this just doesn't seem like a piece of property that has connectivity or um, serves any of the purposes potentially that the town would want to use it for. So we would request uh, that that the planning board suggest the town does not act. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm just getting uh, my screens here together. So uh, any planning board comment on this i see oh chris i just wanted to say that your duty is to recommend to town council whether you think the town should purchase this property for 1.6 million dollars and um i have not heard anyone in the town government um speak in the affirmative about that. Sometimes we do hear people speaking in the affirmative and recommending purchase because the property is contiguous with some other town owned property, but I haven't heard that in this case. So just wanted to make sure that you understood what you would be doing. You're making a recommendation either to exercise the right of first refusal or not to ex exercise the right of first refusal. So, uh, Tom, the access to this property would be from Sunderland Road, or? Sunderland? Correct. Okay. Off and of Sunderland Road, correct. The current use is, is what? Agricultural. So, I, there, I believe there are hay fields, at least okay. to the east of, there's a, probably a perennial stream. We're actually in the process of going through an ANRAD, but uh, I believe that there's hay fields, and I, and I know I saw 
a tractor out there maybe two weeks ago to the west of that stream planting something and i don't know what they were planting, but a crop so it, okay. it is agricultural currently and i'm just trying to get my bearings on cal's road what significant so pam should probably bring up a map pam can you bring up the map so people can see and part of it is zoned um commercial well i don't know mr reed should explain how it's zoned yeah so but it's <laughs> so so from the uh westerly property line which is also sunderland road um about and if in traveling towards the east about 18.58 acres is zoned PRP, so professional research. I see, yeah. That is a portion that is being removed. And then the balance of the land from that zone line to the east property line, which is also Montague Road, I believe it's RN, um, but don't quote me on that one. It is a residential zoning district. I just don't off the top of my head remi remember what it is. Pam, can you bring up the um, map that shows the zoning? I think it follows this. It's part of that letter that was sent from Mr. Reedy's office. Um, so that, that's part of the packet? Is that yeah, right, it's part, of, part of the packet. I think it's like page, page three 50. in the packet or page, I don't know. I think it's page 50 in the materials. Okay. That, that, that bisects the... It's yellow and red. That's how you can recognize it. Okay, I'm going fast. So if you see it, it's an RO. Thank you. There. Should be the next. Yeah. Yeah, there. There you go. There we go. So the red is the 18.5, and that's the portion that is as being requested to come out of Chapter 61A. The RO is um, not plan to come out of 61A. And I'm not sure if the person who's proposing to purchase this property is proposing to buy that portion in the RO or just the portion in the PRP. It's a little bit hard to read this plan because it's showing PRP land as red and we normally think of that as commercial, but it is PRP Professional Research Park. So uh, I'm wondering if, if Tom or Chris can kind of go over this because Amher says the most, you know, conservation, you know, recreation land percentage wise of any town, uh, you know, in the Pioneer Valley. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just wondering what's the process involved here? Just kind of go over it one more time. Um, no, I don't see any issues, but I just, so the process would be, so. if the town felt that it was worthwhile to acquire this property and it felt like it wanted to um, match the purchase price that's in the purchase and sale agreement, then the town would, um, then the town council would decide to exercise its right of first refusal and purchase this property. Um, but nobody in the town government has said that they, as far as I know, said that they want to purchase this property or that they have a use for this property and it's not contiguous with other town owned land. So those are the things that we normally think about if we have a particular use in mind for a property or if it's contiguous with other okay. conservation land or something like that. So I, I don't think the town needs any more land of this nature. <laughs> It's <laughs> guess based on the statistics, but uh, Janet, you have your hand up. Um, I'm actually a little. I, I, I'm. I'm. I don't know if I've missed the giant boat, but I had no idea that we were being asked for to recommend to town council that this land not be brought. And so it says chat on the agenda. It says chapter 61A release request. I wasn't quite sure what our role in that because I know that goes to town council. Um, so I have, no, I mean, I had no idea that this is what Mr. Reedy was going to ask us. And I actually feel like I have almost no information about the land itself. Um, we know it's farmland. We know we have a river through it, at least two or three streams. It's got wetlands. It's, I know that's floodplain because someone told me. Um, so I don't know. I don't know anything about the soils. I don't know about the ecological importance. I don't know the agricultural importance. I know that we're cultivating more land than they were when I, 2003 when I moved here I have literally 
no basis to make a recommendation to town council other than Mr. Reedy statements. And so I, I don't know why, why it's even on the agenda. I mean, if, if you want the town, if you want the planning board to make a recommendation, I think we need to know a lot more about this land and its significance as agricultural land, as wetland. I don't know. I just don't know anything. And, um, you know, I don't know anything about this land other than I didn't know that we were talking about this. So I, I would need to know a lot more information before recommending anything to well, the town council. Yeah, it, it's on the agenda. I mean, but it says release request. Um, may I? So I had no idea. Yeah. So, Chris. So there was material in your packet describing what Chapter 61A land is and how it goes into or comes out of Chapter 61, 61A, 61B. I tried to provide you the state law that um, relates to this and an excerpt from uh, a handbook that um, various towns and cities in Massachusetts use in determining what to do with um, Chapter 61A land when it is requested to come out. And in the past, um, the planning board has had many of these requests and um, it's, it's kind of a, what, institutional memory on the part of planning board members who have been around for a while, who, um, you know, help other planning board members to understand what the process is. Uh, I think I've described what the process is and the materials that were in your packet should have described them. I think Ms. Ms. McGowan is asking for specific information about this land, like soils and agricultural um, benefit and, and all of that. So perhaps that's information that she needs to make the decision as to whether she would recommend that the town acquire this property. Um, so that's- Thank you. So uh, Doug? Thanks, Jack. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I came on the board in January of last year and sometime last year in the spring, uh, we had a similar request that was a little farther up Sunderland Road. And uh, that was my first experience with the Chapter 161 release. Uh, I don't know if it was accidental, but at that meeting, Dave Zomek, I think, was present and uh, talked about how the town had a strategic plan to buy a lot of the, the land that was on the west side of Route 116, I think it was, just a kind of across the street from the parcel we were talking about. Um, and so when I hear Chris say tonight that there's nobody in town government that she's aware of who is advocating for this, I think of the CONCOM and uh, you know, the other people who are interested in land preservation and think about this, you know, how we prioritize what we want to buy. And the fact that, that Chris is saying that she's not hearing anybody advocating for buying this suggests to me that the other people in town government and probably the other committees that uh, would be interested in this have, have not expressed any interest. So on that basis, I am, I am okay with proceeding to a vote on, on these parcels. Thank you. Thanks, so uh, do we have, all right, Janet? So, and the then master, I'm sorry, the master plan, one of the tasks is for the Amherst to get an inventory of its farmland and its priorities and you know what it wants to protect. So is there a strategic plan? And I've just never seen it. I would love to see that and have the CONCOM and the Farm Commission or anybody weighed in. I, I don't want to assume silence is assent. Um, it's actually, there's like 2,000 legal cases on that. Um, but I, I just think is, is there an inventory of farmland? Is there a priority list? Is there a strategic plan? And you know, I'd love to see that. It'd be great if we had been implementing the master plan in that way. Okay, I, I, I just re would reiterate that Amherst has an abundance of this type of land to where we, we have the most of anyone in Pioneer Valley. So uh, I think we should scrutinize this, but um, um, you know, with, with, with Chris's uh, 
input that you know there's another you know there's no other concerns uh that she is knowledgeable you know within you know the the town uh departments um i'm i think this is this is a go so uh chris you have your hand up and then andrew and then doug i wanted to say that there is um this the open space and recreation plan has um information about lands that the town would like to acquire, but the town needs to be wary about expressing interest in land because it can end up competing with other purchasers. So usually when the town is interested in purchasing something, it kind of keeps a low profile about it. Um, so I don't think that there's a master list of, um, of land that the town is planning to acquire. I think it's more like um, people in town hall have ideas in their heads about land that would be worthwhile to acquire, land that is part of the Mount Holyoke range or land that abuts other conservation areas that the land that the town owns, which may be in the conservation, uh, excuse me, in the open space and um, recreation plan. But I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's not realistic to expect that there's an inventory of all the properties that the town might like to acquire, because in some cases we don't want to let everybody know that we might like to acquire it. And we come along and we say, we bring it to the conservation commission or the planning board or town council or other bodies. And, you know, when the opportunity arises and the opportunity might arise when someone passes away or when someone decides to donate land or sell land or whatever but it it's not a very um it's not a completely straightforward process so there is there's not an inventory of all the properties that the town wants to acquire thank you chris uh andrew and then doug do you, you can speak after if, if you want so yeah i i was i was just say i i I think I agree with Janet here. I think there's there's really no additional context relative to the value of the property. It's it's a right of first refusal, right? So I don't know that necessarily the the concerns of like impacting the purchase price by sharing potential interest necessarily come into play here. I, I imagine like we'll probably all land in the same spot, but I do think it would be uh, useful to have a bit more concrete feedback. I think the silence is, is not consent is a, it's a valid point here. I imagine it's a quick ask of the of, of concom just to say is this you know is, is this something that um you feel is of value um that we should consider um i would think that's really like their role in this process here i i i would otherwise agree that it's it's just sort of um you know our general feel as to what we think the quality of that particular parcel is without a lot of additional context so um, I'm going to ask um, Dave Zomek sure. if he's available to join the meeting. And maybe I could answer if I, if you don't mind, um, Please, Tom. Mr. Chairman. Right. So, so under 61A section 14, we have to provide notice to certain uh, parties. And so we provide it to town council, to the town manager, to the planning board, to the conservation commission, to the board of assessors and to the state forester. So those are the groups that under statute, we have to provide notice to. So all of those groups are going to give, save for the state forester, all of those groups and it ultimately culminating in the town council are going to give an opinion on whether or not uh, the town should exercise their right of first refusal. Um, and so when, we're, when you're saying, you're talking about the, the conservation commission, they have and are, I, I don't know if they already have, um, I suspect that they may have already discussed this um, property and whether or not it should be, you know, they would potentially make a recommendation to the uh, board, to the town council to exercise that right of first refusal or not. And so when we, when we just take a step back and when we think about the groups that did receive the notice that are making their own response formulating their own answer the planning board need not personal opinion here rely on what the other boards are doing because we've given all those other boards notice and so 
you know, when I have asked you for, uh, and, I, and I haven't appeared in front of the Conservation Commission, they didn't ask me to come. Chris asked me to come here to, to give the presentation this evening. When I say make the recommendation, uh, it is ultimately town council's decision. And so the board may say, yes, we want you to buy it for $1.6 million, um, or no, we don't want you to buy it. And, and in either circumstance, the town council ultimately can do what it is that, that they want to do. So while I know I haven't given any additional context about the land, um, at this stage, frankly, it is the, the, if the town were to exercise their right of first refusal, they would then step into the shoes of the contract purchaser and be responsible for acquiring the property for $1.6 million. Um, and so that's where, where this is at, at this point. Thank you, Tom. Um, sorry, I was trying to do a little research on my own here with the GIS. Um, so we have Maria uh, and Chris, Jack. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, Maria, then Chris, or yeah. Oh, uh, I would say let Chris go. She's probably got some. Yes. <laughs> oh, I Chris, just I just wanted Chris to yeah. mention that um, this is on the town council agenda for Monday night. So um, not that I want to put any pressure on you <laughs> and I'm not going to put pressure on you. It's completely up to you to decide. And if you're not ready to decide, that's fine. But I just wanted to mention the fact that it is on the town council agenda for Monday night. Very good. I'm still navigating my, my GS. Uh, you may also be interested, and I think I'm at liberty to say this, that this property is being considered um, for a, um, what? Sort of a, an incubator space. And you may have seen articles about the eruptor um, in the town paper. So oh, really, this, this is property, yeah. This, this is, is the research, oh God, that, yes, research that, that, and development with uh, light fa fabrication, small batch fabrication. That's that's and that that requires you know, I, and I didn't want to get into it this evening just because I, you know, don't want to conflate topics because that's a that's a whole separate approval process sure. which will be back in front of this board. But yes, this is this is the property. I, 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 I did not know that. So, uh, but yeah, that's a very exciting thing for, for Amherst. Um, good to know. Um, and I'm looking again, I'm, I'm getting distracted by <laughs> my research. Uh, so Maria and then Doug. Oh, if I think back to previous uh, uh, approvals like this, or, or sorry, projects ahead of in front of us like this, um, we don't normally have like a survey, soil samples, uh, you know, studies. It's literally the parcel map, what zone it's in. And then Chris gives us um, her input from town hall. Um, I can't recall a single one that's come in front of us where we have any more information than that. Honestly, I, I, I feel like this is not unusual. Um, I don't want to say it's like we're rubber stamping, but I do say that it's, this sounds like a very safe uh, decision. Um, like Doug said, that was, you know, David Zomek came just to sort of describe sort of town, big picture kind of stuff. But if nothing has been raised about this parcel, I don't see any need for more information as far as the site itself and the, you know, its features. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I'm trying to, as, as someone who's been on the board for a while, I'm trying to recall previous, and I can't remember a single one that, you know, had anything beyond like just seeing the GIS map for the parcels. That's it. Uh, and Doug, and then Janet. Yeah, now that I realized that, that this is the parcel that's related to the eruptor, I, I need to recuse myself from all of the deliberations related to this. Um, I have a very tenuous family connection to that project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Janet? Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. So um, when, when we had the Salza, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, property 
Dave Zomack gave us kind of a lengthy history of the properties and their, the town's interest in it. He talked about wetlands, he talked about the soils, and then it was kind of rocky with some ledge. And so we have none of this information. I mean, I do know there's wetlands on it, I know there's streams, I know it's part of a flood plain you know, district, it's a recharge area. I know nothing about the soils, I don't know how it, the history of the site. So I, I'm gonna abstain from voting because I just don't have enough information to make a recommendation or not. I don't really have an opinion on how much farmland Amherst should have or not have, or you know percentages and things like that. I just I think that if you're asking me to make a decision about this property, I need some information about it. And I appreciated having Dave Zomack here, and I just feel like we're kind of just kind of saying sure, but not I have I don't know the basis of it. So that's all I'll say. Um, is there any public comment or anything? Do people is anyone in the audience? Uh, it, yeah, if the board has spoken again, I, 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 I think this, um, you know, w w Chris has, I think, spoken on behalf of the town in terms of general, you know, approval of, uh, of this, correct, Chris? Um, I think I have been around enough to know if anyone has um, an opinion about this, I believe Dave Zomick would have told me if he thought that this property was worth acquiring for the town for agricultural purposes or conservation. He's um, he's been asking me, you know, when is the planning board going to be um, meeting about this? You know, and he just sent me an email today asking how has the planning board decided about this. So he's totally aware that the planning board is. Um, considering this uh, piece of property tonight. And um, I guess it's too bad that he's not here to talk to you about it. Okay, um, Andrew. Yeah, I, I think some of the, like, you know, the extra information that the Janet talked about, which I thought we need as well, like knowing that it's going to be built out as this incubator, like is consistent with PRP. So like, that would have been useful information as part of the presentation. We have it now, right? And I think from a zoning perspective, like our job, making sure that, that you know, we've, we have got, uh, you know, the, the parcels are, are zoned in such a manner that it helps develop the master plan. That seems like it's consistent. But I think that's like the level of information I would have, would have appreciated sort of in the initial presentation. This is what we're trying to do with it. Because as a member of the planning board, I can certainly be, be supportive of that use in the PRP. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, I see no other comments from the, or hands raised by the board, so we can go to public comment. And I see none, Pam. Oh, we got a hand up. Janet Keller. Janet, please state your name and address, please. Janet, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. It's late, sorry. Um, Janet Keller, uh, 120 Pulpit Hill Road, North Amherst. Um, so, I just, um, I, I just have a question for you. Um, it, it is um, a, a piece of farmland um, that ha does indeed have floodplains and wetlands on it. Um, and um, I don't know the, either the, the state law or um, the, the zoning law. Um, so I guess my question is, is this strictly limited to you deciding whether to advise the town council to purchase it, um, to take the right of first refusal, or does it have anything to do with the underlying land in the area surrounding it. And I, I just don't know enough about that, but 
um, as a neighbor and an abutter, you know, that's important to me. Chris, would you like to respond to that? Um, so there are a number of things to consider here. Um, and I think the primary one is that no one in town has come up with a use for this property. No one has stepped forward and said, the town really needs to purchase this land and operate a farm there or you know, farm this property or sell it as a farm. And, and we absolutely need to have this remain as farmland. This has been zoned PRP ever since I came to town, which is a pretty long time ago. Um, and it's always been the thought of people on the planning board and in town government that this would eventually be developed for PRP, which is Professional Research Park. And so there is, um, you know, a proposal to develop this property for Professional Research Park. So um, the idea of stepping in and saying, um, no, we don't want that to happen. We want this property to remain farmland and we're willing to pay $1.6 million for this property to remain farmland. Um, that would be the statement that you would be making if you um, recommended to the town council just that. If you were to recommend to town council to purchase this property because you felt like it really needed to maintain as farmland or that it be, needed to become conservation land, that's sort of running counter to the way this property has been zoned, you know, probably since 1972. I'm not, I'm guessing, but you know, I, I go back almost that far in town. So um, that's kind of the choice. And so you, you need to make a choice to recommend, to make a recommendation to town council. They're the ultimate deciders in this case, but that, that would be my, um, That'd be my thought process. The other thought process would be if something is built there and it is a contributing um, you know, revenue generator, that's a benefit to the town. If the town spends $1.6 million to purchase the property and it's that money that we didn't have in our budget, we're going to have to go somewhere to get that money. We'll have to go to CPAC or you know, the state or I'm not sure where we're going to get the money, but we'd have to go somewhere to get it or take it out of our operating budget or our general budget or our capital budget. <laughs> so it, it kind of opens up a lot of um, doors to think about um, if you were to decide this land should not be used for PRP, it should be used for farmland. And we're gonna recommend that the town spend that money to purchase this property so that it remains <coughs> the way it is right now. That, that's kind of, my opinion about what you're deciding. Yeah, again, I, I actually pulled this up finally. You know, there, there certainly are wetland issues. That's not under our purview with the Planning Commission, but uh, knowing that the, um, what is it, the, um, um, <laughs> the, the, the eruptor, okay. Knowing that the Raptor project is behind this, I mean, knowing that Dave Zomack has not, you know, said, you know, otherwise, Paul Bachman, anyone, um, I, I think this is this is uh, you know a go as far as I'm concerned. Um, again, Amherst has is overflowing with. You know, open and recreational, you know, spaces, and uh, and and I, I can't imagine that this property going toward you know a development uh, project in the future would be a detriment uh, to the town. So um, I'm good. You know, I know that we don't have everything, all the information that we would like, but. Um, um, Tom, uh, maybe you can fill in you know, some gaps here, but um, I guess what gaps can I help fill in? 
I don't. I did. I miss the mark anywhere here. So uh, no. I mean, I, I I think you. I think Chris said it really well in, in the message that would be sent to town council um, by a planning board recommendation that the the town council exercise its right of first refusal. You know, I think the I, I can echo Chris's sentiment that I, you know, I've, I've talked to Dave Zomek quite a bit about this land this project and i didn't want to speak for him um but to chris's point we're on the town council agenda for monday um and so if if that if you get the sense of where the town is at with ac acquiring this this property um and then you know i would I, I think chris brings up a great point of of what the planning board has done um you know 40 years ago with the zoning of it as, as, as PRP and without an outcry from the folks in town hall that this is a crucial piece. To me, it's, it's probably a, hopefully a, a deliberative but simple decision that, that the planning board recommends um, the town council does not exercise the right of first refusal. Very good. Any, any uh, discussion, further discussion on the board? I see none. Uh, public comment. Good. So we have a motion. Anywhere? Andrew? Make the motion. Okay. What's the motion? The motion is that the <laughs> You, the so, planning board recommends that the town council not exercise its right of first refusal. Is that the motion? Yes, that is the motion. I'll second. So uh, any uh, discussion? Okay, can we just take it a vote then? Um, Andrew? Aye. Um, Doug? Abstain. Abstain. Janet. Abstain. Um, Johanna. Aye. Uh, did I skip you, Maria? I did. Oh, approve. Yes. Okay, and I, I uh, approve as well. So I think whether well, is that four. Four zero two abstentions. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to everybody. We'll, we'll, we'll see you soon. Stay well. Bye-bye. Thanks. So uh, next is Chapter 61A, Release Request Property of Michael J. Stoss and Laurie A. Stoss, land on Market Hill Road, map 3C, parcel 106, which is 5.75 acres. So that's, I'm going to be presenting that because I don't see anyone, I don't think there's anyone here on behalf of... Um, the landowner and um, essentially what they're doing, they don't have a purchase and sale agreement here. Um, so presumably the land would be, if the town were to exercise a right of first refusal, um, it would have to either be uh, ass assessed by the town or it would have to be, um, we'd use the assessor's uh, numbers, which I don't have here. Um, but essentially can can Pam bring up the map mm -hmm. yes um I just need a second to remember where I put it Is it's in here sure. no okay. sorry about that So this is property on Market Hill Road, and it's owned by the um, Michael Stoge and Lori Stoge, and they live on Market Hill Road. And they're asking to have this piece of land that is outlined in yellow here, uh, parcel 3C-106, removed from Chapter 61A. And... Um, I believe what they're doing is they're changing the use of the property. 
the property is currently under Chapter 61A, which is agricultural and horticultural. And they are proposing to change the use to residential, I believe, although it's not completely clear. But they're not proposing to sell it. Yes, in the bottom of the first paragraph, this letter constitutes statutory notice that the owner intends to convert the parcel to a residential use from an agricultural use. So that's what they're proposing to do. And they haven't given me any more information about that, but you have the packet. And you have any questions? I think there are other maps that um, are further down in the packet, aren't there, Pam? Like in the highland portions of, of Amherst. <laughs> That's all Mitchell. This is this is Stoge. Here we go. Yep. yep. So here's the map, map C three one oh six. So there are already buildings on three C nineteen, and they've already taken three C twenty five, which is that flag lot to the east. They've already taken that out of Chapter sixty one A, and now they want to take out this. 3C106, and I think the building there is a barn. We have another map. And this is um, a surveyed map. Oh, I'm sorry, it's crooked. So are there questions about this? Well, uh, I guess I would have to ask, you know, has Dave Zomack or anyone else, you know, within the town, made a recommendation. No one has given me any indication that the town is interested in using this property for anything. But they're aware of their- Dave everyone... Zomick knows that this is coming before okay. the planning board tonight. All right. And he sent it to town council, just like he sent the other one to town council to make sure that they were both submitted in proper form. Okay. So that's just kind of like, um, what is it? Um, some sort of approval. <laughs> if, if he had thought that the town should purchase this property, he would have told me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Presumptive approval. That's what I was thinking. Of. So um, good. A any, uh, I see a couple, Andrew and then Janet. Yeah, I'll just say I, I know this this property and the Stotes family, you know, they're related to Atkins. I'm not exactly sure how they're they're tied into the family, but um, I've driven by this thing like a gazillion times over decades. I don't know that I've ever really seen it, seen it farmed. Like it's sort of an awkward lot, just triangular, and it's almost on a plateau. Um, it's got sort of hills uh, on the other side of Market Hill. It doesn't really seem like it's particularly useful for farming and I can imagine that um, and this is one I will say like I feel comfortable with this one knowing knowing the property and seeing that, that it to me it seems like that it's probably not a very viable use for the, the town's money to pursue to preserve for farming. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Janet? Um, I'd like to first express the hope that if this, the Stoteses have this in agricultural um, 61A for tax purposes, that they are indeed farming. But um, I don't know anything. I just want. I just hope that when we get these requests in the future to make recommendations, we have any some information about the land and its value, or its use, or its potential use, or its rec anything. I just I, I can't vote on something where I, I know nothing about it. So I'm going to abstain again. But I really hope this doesn't keep happening. It, so, sorry, one. Yeah, I think probably Chris just having a little something from the town uh -huh. in terms of a formal memo would be helpful. Um, but I think we can read between the lines and, and understand the town's position uh, uh, on this. Um, so, 
any other comment, Andrew, your, your hands up. That's I was just gonna say at the risk, you no, know, just at the risk of calling the IRS upon stouts, like I'm sure they do use it for farming and I just haven't paid close enough attention. Um, you know, we should probably just do a site visit for these things, right? I mean, like it's it's easy enough to go there and we get our eyes on it. That would probably help. That's all. And um, I should probably invite Dave Zomek to come to these meetings when we're talking about Chapter 61A release requests. Uh, Doug, please. May I make a motion that we uh, recommend to town council that they not exercise their right of first refusal to purchase this land? Good. Uh, I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? Let's see none. Uh, let's take a vote. Um, Maria? Uh, Andrew? Aye. And Doug? Aye. Janet? Abstain. And Johanna? Aye. And I am a, a yes as well. So it's six, or excuse me, five, yes, one abstention. Good, okay. So uh, topics not, excuse me. Oh, okay. Uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 40 hours prior to this meeting. Anything, Chris? I don't have any topics. Okay. Very good. Uh, form ANR subdivision applications? No, no form ANR. Okay. Uh, upcoming ZBA applications? No, not tonight. Yeah, we, we know we're meeting every week. I mean, we probably can like just peel uh, the, the, this <laughs> part of the agenda off. Um, quite frankly. Um, Are you okay with that? Just go right to the board of the chair, uh, board of staff. Well, so you could decide that this is a regular meeting of the planning board because it's on the schedule and next week you're holding kind of an irregular meeting. So on irregular meeting nights, maybe we could drop all of these things and regular okay. meeting nights, we go through them. How's that? Okay. All right. So um, with regard to uh, planning board committee and liaison reports, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, I have nothing. Uh, CPCA, Andrew? We're not meeting. Uh, we just got a newsletter sent to us. I'll, I'll flip it over to uh, Chris and you, Jack, and maybe you just forward the board for them for you all to review at your leisure. Okay. And then the Ag Commission? Uh, we did get a notice from our staff member that the Ag Commission will not be meeting until further notice. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, and then Tom's not here for the Design Review Board. And then Christine. Uh, oh, I, I, we, we can't really get into this, but again, thank you, Janet, for correcting you know, the, the process chart uh, has been, a, you know, we had the wrong one. And, but we'll, we're going to be talking about zoning bylaws quite a bit uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> so I think we can, we can, you know, attack it at that time. And again, you know, it's, you know, it's late. But uh, Janet, you okay with that? I'm sorry, what? Okay with what? Well, I'm just saying that, 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 that process with, with the CRC. Um, we have a, we now we have a chart that has been distributed to the planning board that is uh, we have the right one now. No, I, I, think I we, had, we yes. have an outdated one, and we're going to be talking about zoning bylaws, and then that's all we're going to be talking about next week. So I'm just thinking that we're we're going to be good to go to Perfect. take that discussion up then. So now. But I think it's a strange irony that I voted against this process chart a year ago and nobody who voted for it. See, I mean, just, I would like to see us implement the process we agreed to and not in this hell's rush to zoning amendments because we're talking about the things next week and they're supposed to have a hearing, another public hearing. Yeah. And I still don't know when these have been sent, you know, they've been 
submitted to us for refer for yeah, I just I don't understand this seems like we're going faster and faster on less and less information following random processes and you know we're having here public hearings scheduled way before we're ready I don't know why um, a year ago we decided to like put the zoning subcommittee on hiatus and that would be the committee that would go through things and here we are in the situation where we're just kind of like every week is a new week and you know everybody's looking at the wrong chart and what difference does it make if nobody implements it? I'm just really disturbed by this whole thing. I just wish. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, Chris is going to speak, but I, I believe that uh, we can continue the hearing. If we're not ready, we don't need to. Why, why do we have a public well, hearing but, until we're ready? But I think we, we, we are at the disposal of the town council. I mean, we, we, we're a planning we board. Refuse, we, we, we take we our cues from them, but we can, let's hear what Chris has to say here. We could decide our own schedule with Chris. Chris. I, I just wanted to say that during the meeting, I did um, email Mandy Jo Haneke to find out um, her opinion about when things were, things were submitted to the planning board. So in her opinion, um, the town council referred the rezoning of 14A33, the CVS parking lot to town to the planning board on may 24th and then she has given me other dates um, she's given me the motions for all of the other referrals and i will forward this to you um, this evening so you can all read it and then if you have questions we can talk about it next week but i just wanted to confirm that in her mind um, the town council had referred this to the planning board on May 24th, and that's the date of submittal, and that's the date that the 65-day clock starts. So, um, I would love to hear from Lynn Greismer and KP Law about what is what it means to submit to the planning board, mm -hmm. and why we're not following the, the old process, the process they started. So, I, you know, these are legal issues. Very good. Um, moving on again, report of the chair. I have nothing. Report of staff. I have nothing. Where's See you next week, right? <laughs> See you next Wednesday. Good luck. <laughs> this is like such Thank a you very much. Meeting every week. Uh, okay. Um, and adjournment. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank I, you. I, we, we all are doing a lot, I think, to keep up with you know, what town council, I guess, and, 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 uh, you know, Paul Balkman and et cetera. So I, I'm very appreciative of everyone being available as much as we have. So it's, um, anyway, good night. Good, night. good morning, everyone. Good, good night. Good morning. Good night. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.